All right, coming up momentarily, we have a match between Dan Brooks and N.A. Smith 99 for tournament big money. This is loser's bracket round three. Uh, we actually have the top two seeds meeting each other relatively early. Uh, one of the top two seeds is definitely going home. Well, I mean, they're probably at home, but they're, they're definitely no longer in the tournament anymore uh, after this match. Looks like the table's up, and both players are here, so we should be getting this underway soon. Let me look at the betting real fast. Um, maybe there's is there not a betting category for this one? Why don't I see it? I can't find the... Maybe it's not up. Oh, well. I wanted to see what the bets were like, but I can't find the... The relevant category in the spreadsheet. Oh, you mean like the individual betting list? I'd look at that, except game one is now starting. What have we here? This looks like a relatively strong kingdom. Uh, so for trashing, you've got, I mean, bishop's not really trashing because, I mean, you can use it to trash, but then it trashes for your opponent as well. So if trashing's good, you don't want to use it because you're getting your opponent a free benefit. If trashing's bad, you don't want to use it because you don't need trashing in the first place. So I wouldn't consider bishop a trasher. It's good late game for scoring, but it's not something you want to use early. So main trashing will either be forager can get you trashed pretty quickly, um, or because pixie's in the kingdom, we also have goat around, which is just like a copper that trashes for you. Uh, between those two, I think it'll be pretty easy to get pretty thin. Then there's plenty of draw. Patrol's like a, a nice smithy that also gives you some reorder abilities. Uh, Envoy and Hunting Grounds both draw four cards rather than three. Uh, hunting Grounds draws your top four. Envoy draws... Envoy is like a cursed Hunting Grounds. It draws you four cards, but you look at the top five, and the one you want the most, your opponent's going to ditch, and you draw like the worst four of the five. Uh, it can be a... A little bit tricky to use, but drawing four cards for a, a four-cost card is still, you know, quite good. And then there's Sinister Plot, which is like a little boost and draw every once in a while. Action is going to be Villa. There's only one stack of Villas, so action, I guess, will be the limiting factor in what you can do. Uh, let's see what they go with. Um, Dan Brooks has Goat Turn 1. Turn 1 Goat would be really good if you also had Overgrown Estate in hand. Because you trash the overgrown estate, then you draw an extra card, and then that means you're going to be triggering a shuffle turn two, and that goat's going right back into your deck, which, I mean, goat's probably the most valuable card for you early on. Fortunately, uh, you know, Dan Brooks doesn't have overgrown estate, N.A. Smith doesn't have goat, so neither of them's going to get that effect uh, turn one. So it kind of got a relatively even open here. <laughs> and see some commentary on Invest. Invest is this nifty little new event from Menagerie where... You buy it for four, then you set a card aside, and then every time your opponent gets that card, you get to draw two cards. And because it's exiled, you can also get that card back later uh, if you buy a new copy. So like if I invested Hunting Grounds, and then later I buy Hunting Grounds, I can take my invested Hunting Grounds off the mat uh, and get a second Hunting Grounds. Although then I stop getting the plus two cards per time. I I don't know how I feel about Invest. I, I see a lot of people hate it. It, it does... It is weird. It, it's kind of weird and difficult to play with. I'm not sure I'm, I, I use it optimally yet, but I, I don't. I don't obviously. I'm not on the invest hate train. I, th I think it just leads to interesting interactions. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, hop on. Yeah, my recording setup to handle co-commentator. Awesome. awesome. How's, How's it going? Going well. Thoughts on this kingdom? Cool. Uh, it looks very powerful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I think, uh, yeah. Uh, by the way, Dan did, did get the fast overgrown if they had turned one and figure the shuffle. Oh, did, oh, yeah, he, oh, you're right. He'd already done that by the time I was looking. I, yeah, I was just wrong yeah, about that. Okay, I, I'd say Dan's got the better opening then. Definitely, yeah. yeah I mean, um, you have like a one in five chance or so of drawing the goat again turn two, which would be amazing, although that didn't happen here. Yeah, that'd be that'd be ridiculous. Um, so Dan, uh, Inve so Dan invested in Villa, which is which is interesting. Um, yeah, that's. I mean, investing Villa in the abstract makes a lot of sense to me. You're gonna be buying villas here. 
I'm surprised you did it as early as turn one. Uh, I would have thought turn one, like on four, Sinister Plot seems strong. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I agree. I would, I would have gone with Plot, I think. I would wait till uh, N.A. Smith buys like a draw card or something, like where you want to buy a Vila. Yeah. He doesn't, even, he doesn't even have anything in his deck to... Um, to yeah, to, so I think, I think it was early. But we'll see. Investing in Pixies is an interesting idea. I mean, you probably would naturally want to buy a bunch of Pixies here just because you generally want to buy a bunch of Pixies, and so that might pay off. Uh, what are the boons on hmm. Druid? Druid looks maybe playable, but not, like, super important. Yeah, are the boons from Druid, like, also not part of Pixie? Is that a thing? That is correct. So... Okay. The Pixie cannot get Field's Gift, Sky's Gift, or Earth's Gift. Which... Mm, I think that's probably better for Pixie. Like, if I had to choose between a Pixie that could get anything and a Pixie that could get um, anything but those three... I think I'd rather not have those three in the Pixie deck here. Like, Will-O-Wisp is great, Trashing is great, and you'll see those boons more often if you get it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Will-O-Wisp is usually the best boon in the Pixie thing. Um, although it's not, like, super important here because there's just, like, so much draw. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Let's see. What did uh, N.A. Smith open with? He took Pixie Patrol. Yeah, that seems solid. Yeah, with Villa around, you can always afford to load up on terminal draw cards like Patrol or Hunting Grounds or Envoy, even if you don't really have the the villages to support them. Because, like, oh no, I drew two terminal draw cards together. Let me just buy a Villa, and then it immediately goes to hand, and then you can use it the same turn to resolve that. So you can be really greedy with terminal draw. Uh, yeah, but there's also this disaster thing that can happen where you don't have enough money to buy a Villa. And mm -hmm. then <laughs> that is true. You, you, occasionally you put a ton of draw on your deck, and... Yeah, that's a really bad way to solve. Um, so we may see some of that this game. Yeah, I mean, fortunately, the most likely scenario for that will mostly probably be with, like, shelters and stuff, and those will get out of their hands pretty early with the goat. I'd expect to see, you know, Havel and Overgrown Estate trash very soon for both of them. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, what I'm talking about is a bit more of a new mistake that I've made a few times, but these are, these are <laughs> they're good players, so... <laughs> I doubt they'll make it. Um, okay. And a Smith already getting a turn three hunting grounds. Yeah, that's that's quite the turn. Um, got to see his patrol turn three. Already got another terminal draw card. Uh, I'd say there's a solid lead for uh, N.A. Smith here. Yeah, I just have no idea what Dan's doing. He's just like... <laughs> that, uh, what but is Dan doing? He's got like all Pixies and Druids and... No, does he have any terminal draw cards yet? Like any of the big draw cards? I don't think he does. I mean, I guess he's got an invested villa, and his opponent's got a bunch of draw cards. So eventually, he's gonna draw something off of that. That's um, true. That's true. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the the turn one villa is still looking like I don't. I haven't seen it pay off yet. Like if it pays off, it's gonna pay off at, at like four or five turns down the line, and I think that's probably too late. I'd rather have something that it benefits me immediately in the early game. Yeah, so I thought about it, and I think the reason you might do it is because um, if, you, if you invest first, then you draw up there and invest. So if N.A. Smith wants to invest in Villa, then Dan's going to get to draw two cards. Um, so there's some advantage to investing first. And so I think maybe that's why he did it so early. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can get on board with an early Villa Invest, but turn one is a really early Villa Invest. It's really, it's really early. Yeah. It's really early. I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah, I think, you know, just... early on, you're trying to get a card that immediately helps your deck, and I don't think the Villa Invest is helping that immediately. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, early Pixies can be good. Like, if you get an early uh, Flames Gift, you get really fast trashing. Uh, stuff like that can be really helpful. Or will o wisps earlier great because like two thirds of your deck are two cost or less. Um, so the will the the pixies I I, I I make sense to me. The the villa less. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Uh, but like yeah, dance had some pretty bad draws after the first draw. Like he he hit like three on turn four. Which he don't want to hit three on the board really. I guess, but you know he could have he could have bought a pixie there. He bought a silver for some reason. Yeah, I would um, think pixie's better than silver. Yeah, I usually buy Pixie over Silver unless I like have some like 
by default, is definitely a buy pixie over silver. Yeah, this looks like pixies. To... Yeah. yeah. Like, Dan's currently looking at four. He could have bought a villa here, and, or invested a villa oh, here. Oh, he's going to draw. He's going to draw here. Oh, that's Dan. true. That's true. Um, so, N.A. Smith has no money. <laughs> uh, yeah. I he's looking to rectify that. Probably just silver here, honestly, if, if I were him. Yeah, like, or maybe, no, and Druid might even be better. He's overdrawing. He could make use of yeah. the, the Sky's Gift to get some golds into his deck real fast. Nope. Uh, <laughs> N.A. Smith could invest in Villa. Okay, then. <laughs> and some uh, investors here. Uh, uh, Dan's got, Dan drew four cards, so Dan may not have draw cards in his deck, yeah. but he's, he's <laughs> yeah, drawing. Dan's, Dan's drawing the deck. Uh... Moon's Gift. That's a gross one. You never want to see Moon's Gift. No. Swamp's Gift. I think you take that as Dan. Draw, like, 90% of your deck can get drawn by Will-O-Wisps. Yeah, I take it. Just because I don't have any draw cards yet. Flame's Gift. I'd take that one, too, I think. Yeah, I would. Like, Dan's drawn his deck this the... turn because of those invest draws. That's not reliable long term. I think he's still on Yeah. yeah. I think it's close in this one. I can see him not taking it. Yeah. yeah. yeah he don't want it. Um, I'm just, I'm not, like, I, 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 I feel like, I feel like you don't want to over trash here. Yeah, you know, I could see uh, Sun's Gift here. Take three or Sky's Gift. That's the one that it's called. Take yeah, take a gold by an envoy. I would think. You might buy two picks. Maybe two picks. <laughs> two picks makes sense too. I think, I think you should buy an envoy though. Yeah, envoy I think is a little bit better with Villa because often what will happen is if you play envoy like terminally without any actions left, you're like you might see a bunch of great like actions and a few good treasures, but your opponent looks at it and they're like. Huh, my opponent's out of actions. Let me just deny the treasure card, like discard gold. But if there's a villa in the kingdom, they can't safely do that because maybe then you just buy villa and then you're thankful that they've let you keep all the actions. Right. Yeah, yeah and you're going to be super thin here, so like they're not going to have like like they're probably not going to be able to stall you by discarding cards. And if they can't, if, if their discarding doesn't help you stall, it's basically plus four cards. So it's really really strong there. Yeah, it's like a discount hunting ground if you can work around the the discard part. Yeah. 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 Now you can definitely build pretty big here because, like, you know, bishop is payload. I think dis disincentivizes early greening. You can't, like, take a majority of provinces and be like, I've got the lead, I win, because your opponent can outscore you long term. Right, right, right. right. And A. Smith just buying a gold outright. Yeah, fair enough. He did kind of need the payload. Hmm. What's Dan going to do here? He's stuck here. So, um, yeah, Dan's not drawn reliably. I would think, I don't know, Druid for Earth's Gift and buy a Hunting Ground seems like it might be an option. Uh, he's going to take another gold, maybe buy Patrol. No, oh, he wants the Nurse Plot. Okay. I mean, Center's of Plot's draw. Um, maybe, maybe Dan just doesn't plan to buy villas and he's just going <laughs> to flat out and he's going to draw with it. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you can win with that at least some villas here. Like, you want a deck that can do more than one thing per turn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah, N.A. Smith is nice and clean, drawing deck pretty consistently. I. I think you keep the necropolis around. Like villages are pretty limited. I th yeah, he, he's gonna keep it. When it says, I don't know, another gold and an envoy, a hunting grounds and a druid. A lot of options. I, I buy gold here. Uh, I feel like you. Yeah. yeah. Na Smith I, seems to be overdrawing. I would think I'd be happy to get a druid and gain golds off of it, and then later it can gain me like four costs, like a villa when I need it or something. Rather than just buy the yeah. golds outright, he's also got a ton of money. So. Oh, 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 that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Druid's better than yeah, of course. Um, you can also still think about a falconer to get like envoys and. Uh, I don't. I don't. Yeah, let's, um, let's see what cards trigger falconer. 
Um, Druid, Pixie, Falconers. So you're not going to be able to reliably activate it too much, but um, even a terminal workshop to hand, it's not bad. No, with the terminal space, maybe it's not like amazing here. It's it's that they like you may get it, you may not. Yeah. I don't. I think you probably get one. Takes another. He does buy gold. Buys gold. Buys pixie. Okay. The the sky's gift is kind of a crappy way to gain gold. You need a lot of overdraw yeah. for it. Like you have to discard three cards and like. Yeah, discard three <laughs> is a pretty costly penalty. Yeah, it's basically minus four cards for that yeah. gold. So you're paying you're paying a lot for that gold. So I I, I could I on this board I probably would try to get it with Brood, but I I see I could see like buying gold too. It's not crazy. Swamp gift again. I think I take that. <laughs> yeah. Will Dan take flames gift this time? Still no. I feel I still feel like that early flames gift would have been a. Uh, a good call. This one, I don't know, maybe not as much. You know, you, you know, Miskun has a point. You do have four Will O' Wisps in your deck now, but like Dan has not been drawing his deck consistently, and getting no. those coppers may have aided in that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think I think that uh, he has the scourge and Smith from buying Villa a little bit. I think Ennis Smith is. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I feel like. Uh, um, but yeah, but yeah, I agree. He should have taken that Flames gift. He's not. He's definitely. He's definitely struggling a little more than he should. Yeah. All right, time to buy a draw card. <laughs> oh, he's doing it. All right, we got an envoy. <laughs> Start. Look. Could also get a look at hundred that. here. Yeah, that's the thing. Like dance turns are like they look bad, but they're also like he's getting an envoy in hunting ground. Like that's not, not that bad, you know. <laughs> that's really not a bad, terrible turn. Actually, I said hunting grounds, but I'm thinking now maybe patrol plus pixie is better. You know, patrol draws three compared to hunting grounds is four. But when you got four will o' wisps yeah. in your deck, patrol also can help you line up those will o' wisps to draw better. Good point. Good point. Yeah, Fall of War is like Dan is more fast. Than, look, Andy Smith is wow. He's reading really early. That seems crazy. Me buying that that province. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm quite surprised by that buy. That. Yeah, I I don't like that one bit. Piles aren't that low. I I think he's giving Dan away back into this game. I don't I don't understand the rationale for that. I mean, I think Dan's ahead now, certainly. I mean, I think N.A. Smith will be able to province pretty reliably from here on out. But as Dan, you could build to double, you can build to, like, be bishoping golds. Maybe, I mean, N.A. Smith isn't in the lead enough to not matter, but I don't see the need to take the risk. Dan doesn't need to build to double. He's, like, at double already. I mean, <laughs> I, That's very, yeah, he is pretty close now. I think he'll take a gold of this? I don't know, actually. Maybe he'll take Craw. Given how much N.A. Smith is going to be overdrawing as Dan, I'm not even too worried about taking the Villas. Like, he's going to draw his deck anyway. Oh, yeah, that's that's also the case, too, yeah. You can just do your Villa thing, because who cares? He'll, he'll get like, what is he going to do? Buy a province every turn? Yeah. Like, turn 9 pro No, it does turn 8. Turn 8 province. Yeah, I don't... I am very unconvinced. So Dan decided to trigger a shuffle there, but he does have a wisp in the, in the shuffle, so it's not horrendous. But. And he does have two uh, draw coming in from Sinister Plot, so if he does, he can pop that. Uh, the match is zero zero. Zero zero. What were you just saying? Dan just bought a province, too. Oh my goodness. I mean, as Dan, it makes sense. N.A. Smith is already kind of committed to greening even earlier than you do. You don't want to get too behind on the points. Um, that that doesn't surprise yeah. me as much as N.A. Smith's province by. I, want, I mean, what about, like, Falcon or Bishop stuff? That doesn't seem terrible here. Like, yeah, so Fal Falcon or Bishop it's... is, like, yeah, three points per. You could buy a gold and Bishop it for four points. Uh, you could do, like, Grave Robber Bishop stuff even. Give, like, if, if my opponent's only going to have two villas in their whole deck then I can plan yeah. to do a whole lot more fancier stuff if I'm getting all the actions. Um, yeah, no, I, I agree. And um, one nifty thing could be like, 
Rather than gold, what about like grave robber hunting grounds bishop? Like you bishop the hunting grounds for four points, then you also get a duchy, then you can regain the hunting ground to the grave robber bishop it again. That's an easy way to score. Oh, oh yes. That's really, that looks really good. So Annie Smith does double. Wow. Okay, okay. interesting. That's more than I thought his deck could do. Yeah, yeah me too. Yeah, more than I thought too. So now, so now Dan, Dan, you like. I mean, Dan, I guess, could theoretically be pop this double duchy potentially this turn. Um, yeah, let's see. I don't think N.A. Smith is likely to be able to double again. Although, I don't know, maybe Dan will have to buy a villain or something. Uh, so if N.A. Smith takes a single province, that's 24. How does Dan get past 24? Um, needs to score 18. If he does province double duchy this turn... Then he's threatened to do double province and estate next turn. I'm not sure if his deck can do that much. Yeah, I mean, like, I I don't know whether the province thing was right or not. It still feels wrong. But Dan was also behind. And so it's possible, you know, it's not like he's built that much more because I think he was underbuilt to the point that N.A. Smith started greening. I, I think, I, I don't know. I thought, I think Dan has, Dan has more stuff in his deck, I think. I mean, more, more payload, payload in this deck. Maybe, maybe less draw. draw. Yeah. But. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think this um, game's over. Uh, not by a long shot. I, it, it can very much come out of these draws. But my read on the green thing is I thought that. Um, I thought Andy Smith um, greened early because he felt like he was behind. And then he kind of baited Dan the following. I think Dan should have kept huh. building and doing the bishop stuff. And. Um, that, that was my read of the situation. Maybe, maybe, so. maybe. I don't know. I, I vaguely recall thinking I liked N.A. Smith's position better early. Not sure why. He, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Like, Dan's got a lot of stuff in his deck. It's an interesting play order. Like, I wonder if he... What else is down there for Dan? He's got a goat down there, and any other treasures? Two coppers. What else down there? A uh, silver and a necropolis, I think. Uh, is that worth even buying a villa for? My thought is probably. Oh no, maybe he has to. Well, I mean, if I'm Dan, why not just like buy a villa? Buy like. The Falconer, like, like, you bought, I know you bought the province, but just like that's a sunk cost. <laughs> yeah. So the, the issue, of course, is like if if Anna Smith duds here, you get like a whole extra turn. That's huge. And so I would be averse to buying villas if I didn't need them. That being said, I think Dan had a really unfortunate shuffle there, and he probably knew coming up he had Necropolis, two copper, silver, goat, which is just like a total dud next turn. And there's no way he could take right. a dud turn. And so. Um, you know, buying a villa for four to draw, like, what, five coins? I mean, that's not it's something, but it's not particularly much. I'm pretty sure the main reason he's doing that is because he he knew his next turn was just going to be totally shot if he didn't. Mm, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. maybe. Well, well, now now he is, I think he is envoy um, villa on top, which is quite nice. Yeah, I, I would expect him not to play the will wisp which he didn't. Um, so he probably goes pop and stuchy pixie. Uh, makes sense to me. You might count it up and decide that maybe a state's important, but Pixie seems like the default choice there. All right, is it a villa down there? What else? Yeah, that's a villa. Yeah, a villa and we're on top. Pretty good. Yeah, you, you can see it's a, a villa, right? Because the will o wisp top decked the villa um, in the last will o wisp. Yeah. yeah. Right, 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 right. right. He also revealed all his cards with Envoy before. Then, or did he actually? He revealed. He revealed the, the um... Yeah, he knew all the contents of his deck after that Envoy play for sure. Right, um, right. Now Envoy on top is certainly not bad, but if you only draw one draw card, you might be in a little trouble because you know Na Smith likely to not deny it. The will of is actually um, kind of help with the Envoy, because, like, even if they're just cantrips and are unlikely to hit, they'd sort of, like, get in the way of seeing what's coming up, 
And so, like, if, imagine, like, Envoy draws a hand of, like, five Will-O-Wisps or something, right? It makes it very hard for N.A. Smith to effectively discard things. Uh, right, right. And so the best case scenario for here might be for Dan, like, you see some Will-O-Wisps and some treasure, and then the Will-O-Wisp draws into your hunting ground or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's basically, like, that in reverse, like what Myth's kind of saying. Like, you often... Cantrips can make it harder to deal with, like, militia attacks or harder to deal with... Uh, the cards where you're you're picking of the card because you can't tell what you want, but when it's your opponent picking for you, you're kind of happy to have that obfuscation in your deck. If it's like advisor or envoy scenario. Um, you see what Nice Smith just did? Hmm. He trashed his hunting grounds with goat. Yep. And he just prov province dutchied. Makes some sense. I think he's. I think he didn't want to buy a villa. He he didn't want. He wants to see if Dan stalls. You know. Um, oh, this looks winning for Dan. I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Dan's one, I think. Well, he does have to buy a villa, right? So he's, he's got to hit 18, right, or for province, province, estate, although that could be, for example, druid for Earth's gift to gain the estate. Um, right. It could also be druid for, druid for villa here. Um, that's an option. Uh, what's coming up in yeah. Dan's deck? He's probably counting it out. Your Druid for Villa makes your turn more likely to kick off, but then if you fail to hit the 18 mark, it's also making it much more likely for any Smith's turn to kick off. Right. I mean, the Druid for Villa is probably the... Um, well, you're, 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 you're using... You're getting four economy from the Druid. So that's probably going to be better than Druid for Estate. Like, almost... Uh, because you have to get the villa anyway now, certainly, because you're going to, yeah. you know, otherwise you're out of action, so. Yeah, I'm leaning Roof towards villa here looks, looks good. Good villa. I also think that, like, like I don't think N.A. Smith is going to double, and e I think Dan could even play around N.A. Smith getting one more province. I'm not totally sure about that. Like, his deck's not that together, but, um, but I think it's possible Dan could beat 33 points in two turns, like if N.A. Smith beats yeah. his turn. Uh, he doesn't go for it, though. How much does he got here? Dan's player won, so he can't double for the tie. Yeah, so he, he couldn't buy both provinces, so what does he buy? Um, <laughs> As Dan, I'm assuming, I think, the worst, that any Smith is going to get a province, and I'm trying to figure out how I beat 33 points, which means you need 18 more points. Uh, yeah, it might be you know, triple duchy. That seems... Maybe double duchy hunting grounds with the idea that if I draw the surplus hunting grounds I can trash it with goat anyway. I think I'm leaning towards double duchy hunting grounds. Yeah. Yeah, yeah double, double duchy hunting grounds looks good. Um, does does he, he have a, he has a draw card in the seven, right? He's at least one, maybe two. Oh, no seven I have card. not followed Dan's deck well enough. Uh, does he has Will O Wisp in there? But what else? He only has one hunting ground, I guess, and he's seen both envoys. He always, oh yeah, yeah, he's only two envoys. I guess he doesn't doesn't have any more draw cards. Yeah, weird. Yeah, Dan's deck is I not that, quite together enough. I thought he had way more draw. I don't. I was. <laughs> um. This is a tough decision. I can see why he's agonizing over it. He trashes a copper. Interesting. So he's gonna triple Bunchy? Double dodgy patrol. I can see a patrol. Uh, I, I mean, it does get green cards out of your shuffle. I think it's definitely possible for him to draw enough to win there. Um, if, uh, like, for example, what if he he discarded for Villa, drew that pixie, and got, like, Forest's Gift or something? I imagine that's probably enough for the win. I'm not sure how likely that yeah. was. But I think, it, to answer Cave of Sapien's question, I think there's definitely a possible draw that wins for Dan, no question. Oh, yeah, yeah, certainly. And a Smith fails to hit six. Looking good for Dan again. I'm sorry, fails to hit eight. He only hit six. He did successfully if, hit six. If Dan... I feel like if Dan didn't follow N.A. Smith down greening fast, he would have just killed him. He would have gotten bishops, he would have... Maybe not. Maybe maybe, maybe N.A. Smith would have been able to province with Paul being best draw. And and would have would have ended the game, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, look, Na Smith, I mean, he's got a patrol and a hunting grounds, and that's it. Yeah. 
Attorney of Providence is just weird to me. I think I think N. A. Smith felt behind and, and wanted to to um to turn it into a you know maybe I, he he failed to hit eight again. Just, this looks super losing. Yeah. Yeah. Looking at a hand of seven. Yeah. I mean, maybe Dan buys but, a like, Lula, but Dan might just totally whiff here, though. And Dan could whiff here, and if he draws well next turn, still win. Um, I mean, it's also possible he whiffs twice. I guess his deck's not like phenomenal. I think I'd pop that. Um, yeah, no kidding. That's that's quite a nice boon. Uh, yeah. Oh. Ooh, one away. <laughs> But Dan does know he's got a decently good... It's unfortunate. Dan's looking at, like, most of his villages right now, right? Necropolis and two villages. Yeah. Um, wow. And having to buy a villa is definitely a huge cost here at this point in the game. Yeah. So, so not, not really not, not really a friend in the game. Well, it's, it's a cost money-wise, yeah. yeah. Monetary cost. So but the, you don't, the investing doesn't matter, at least. So... Um... Knowing N.A. Smith's hand, it'd be great if Dan bought Province. I'm not sure he would. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If Dan, if Dan that buys Province, we know he's got he's running the script. <laughs> now, <laughs> Estate Duchy, okay. Wait, Wait. oh, he yeah, has Sinister Slot, so he can Province. That's huge. Oh, yeah, that, that pot, the, the plot pot saved him a bit. That being said, Dan's looking at a very nice hand now as well. <laughs> That's his only village, that villa, right? So, uh, how many does he have? I think you're right about that. He could draw that Will O' Wisp, uh, draw that Pixie, and get. No, he can't get Field's Gift. Field's Gift isn't the Druid. Yeah, uh, he'll have to buy a villa here, and that's gonna suck. Um, nice. No, he's got a lot of. Take that boon in a heartbeat. It's starting to look good. Yeah. As Dan, I think I... What order do you play this in? I guess I play the Hunting Grounds because I know I want the golds. I don't know. Maybe he you could wants the a bishop to hunt, bishop hunt Hunting Grounds. Is that possible? If I get a bishop to bishop to Hunting Grounds? I think that like is it. Play? And in drawing him back around to it, I imagine it's more than his deck can do right now because there's also a bunch of junk down there, I think. Yeah, he would have to, he would have to, have to stop here. Yeah. And now he can't do it, certainly. He can't draw on again. Yeah, so one thing I was about to mention, I think, is what you know, Crab Cat ended up saying in the chat, which is the the rationale for Envoy could be, um, does this end up working? If you if you find the goat, you trash the hunting grounds, you get a duchy, then you have enough. Yeah, that, wait, 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 twenty five, thirty six. That wouldn't be enough, um, because if if he found the goat, trashed the hunting grounds, you get province duchy estate, which is ten right. points, and he needs to hit at least twelve. But maybe if he found like duchy. Goat and gold and copper. You could do like province double duchy. And that would work. Most likely, I think he's gonna have to take a villa here. Yeah, he has to take a villa, of course. What's he? Yeah. Although I don't know if you count it up. Does he have enough to even buy all the things he needs if he spends four in a villa? I'm not sure. Maybe. Um, he, he has he has enough money to buy province estate certainly if he finds a goat, and so. Like, he has two wisps here. I guess one of them will get tossed, though. Um, so, if, there, if it goes to the top two cards, at least, he'll be, he'll be able to do that. Um, so that's a two and seven chance. Not not ideal. Um, so thinking about what he needs, he's got to score 12 points, which I think the most plausible route for is, like, by province, by duchy, trash hunting grounds, I think, with the goat, if you find it. And so that requires him to have 13 money for province and duchy, Plus three more because they'll have to buy a village to do all that. So you need six. Oh now, yeah. Right. He's looking at six, eight, ten in hand, fourteen coming up, depending on what N.A. Smith pitches. Ah, uh, is there more treasure down there? I think so. There's more treasure down there, certainly. So I'm not sure if he can draw to all of this though. Like if N.A. Smith just like discards the gold, for example, can he get back to it? Maybe. Uh, he's seen both envoys. He's seen his hunting grounds. He's looking at all four Will O' Wisps. I think he might just not have enough draw to see all those cards. Oh, with you mean if he's playing, if he's trashing the hunting grounds? Yeah, he might not. Right. Yeah. So, like, imagine he draws with the hunting grounds. 
Now the number he's got to hit is he needs to do like province double duchy, which is eighteen right. plus villa, which is twenty one, and I don't think his deck can do twenty one. So I think he has to try to trash the hunting grounds with the goat if he can. For some reason, I think he bought two, had eight sixteen and and bought a villa one turn. Maybe not discarding the villas. That's odd to me. Um, I mean, N.A. Smith obviously knows less about Dan's hand than we do, but I'm wondering why he thought Villa was the best discard there. I would think either discard a draw card like will Wisp or just discard the gold, because, I mean, gold's good at this point in the game. Yeah. So, so, so uh, Wandering Winder is saying, buy Bishop. I think I think you can overdraw to get a Bishop. But then you can't Bishop to Hunting Grounds, which is what you want to do. Yeah, so. Yeah, there could be an argument for, like, that last turn, instead of Duchies, you could buy, like, Hunting Grounds, Bishop, and stuff. Because uh, Hunting Grounds plus Bishop does end up scoring more points than double Bishop. Or Hunting Grounds Bishop scores more than double Duchy. Um, it does require right. action in lining it up. Buying Copper. Uh, the Copper buy is clever. Uh, if he thinks he can draw it, he it's like a free extra coin into his deck um, once he buys the Villa. Although it's not guaranteed. Oh, he should have denied the Goat, I think. Um, might end up not making a difference. The gold alone might be enough. Yeah, so the village denial looks okay, though, because now he's gonna... Well, I guess, no, it doesn't matter, because he, he has nothing else he wants to play besides the, the, the wisp, the right. druid, and the hunting grounds. Yeah, I think if, like, if, if Dan has to play the hunting grounds, I don't think he has enough money left to win. I'll count that in a second. Yeah. Let's see, he's looking at six right there. He's got 8 already, 10, he would need to hit 18, right, 10, um, actually might be close. Hmm. Yeah. Well, well he's not going to get to play the Villa, so that, that, that Villa's out, but he's got Hopper and a Goat in his deck, and then Druid for a coin, too. That's $3 already, so I already, I'm already counting 16. I'm, I'm thinking he's, and then, yeah, I, I think he's got it, even if he doesn't do the, the Hunting Grounds trash thing. This is, yeah, this yeah, totally I don't think he, a win. I think he just wins. Hmm. Could... Uh, uh, no. Um, I mean, he did get relatively fortunate boons in this last turn, but still... I don't know, I went from hating Dan's position to liking it a lot, and I, I think that was largely to do with N.A. Smith greening so early. Yeah. yeah. It just seemed kind of bizarre. Oh yeah, Dan's well got it here. Taking the face, I like it. Fancy. <laughs> yeah, overshot by like over a full duchy. Game one, two, Dan. Yeah, so I think the I think the verdict in that that game is that well Dan got the the good shuffle, but I think that Andy Smith should have built a little bit more. Um but Early game, and it's hard. He's getting some good shuffles. Like his turn three was great compared to Dan's. Yeah. 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 This looks a lot less interesting than if it had actions. <laughs> well, oh yeah so, yeah. so much to almost do here. Well, there's yeah. So Enchantress is a three type for Courtier, Courtier, um, and uh, yeah, that's probably <laughs> probably what you do. I, you, yeah, you could up. like reveal enchantress with courtier, gain a gold, use that to draw with sheepdog, and then butcher the golds. I assume you do something like that, and it probably never fully comes together. I don't think it's an incentive to get a deck that like is actually running smoothly, but something along those lines is probably worth doing. Oh, interesting. I wasn't even. I wasn't. The sheepdogs weren't really on my radar. I guess you could theoretically draw with 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 courtier. It's true, and sheepdog. Um. Uh, I don't know how reliable that'll be. I guess there's you can thin. Maybe it'll be it'll be yeah. I guess you can you can you can thin with free. Probably, probably uh, yeah. reasonable thing to try. Cavo Sapiens pointing out an interesting interaction in chat. I imagine in this kingdom where it's already pretty weak, you're not building too big, you can't do it. But with Leprechaun and Sheepdog together, the way Leprechaun works is it gains the gold first, and then later it checks how many cards you have in play. And so you let's say you play Leprechaun like fourth in your turn, and then you yeah. get the gold, you react with three sheepdogs, then it checks how many cards are in play. The leprechaun was the fourth, really. but there's still four, seven cards in play, and so you actually get the wish anyway. That's funny. <laughs> I don't know, that's, that's interesting. Um, 
<laughs> yeah. If your yeah, I... leprechaun is already seventh and you want to draw with a sheepdog, you just wait until you gain the wish first, and then you can also right. react the sheepdog off of the wish instead of the gold, and then you're still good. Yeah. 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 That's, That's pretty cool. cool. So, so, like, like leprechaun is like a terminal here. And there's, like, not a lot of space here. Yeah. So I don't... I don't... I guess... I don't think uh, you're doing leprechaun good here. It's just a neat thing about those two cards in general. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I agree. It's cool. Cool with that. But yeah, I wouldn't go for leprechaun here. I would just... I I would try to get thin, though. Just, like... I'd, like, you could... Although butcher... There's butcher, too. Um, I mean, I just try to, like, get thin so I could just play court tiers a lot and, like, get a lot of golds and butcher them. Yeah. And, How do you open here? I like priest sheepdog, I think. You can react the sheepdog to whatever you buy to play it as a way of the goat, which would be a nice way to get a little bit trashed. Yeah, that looks good. Plus, you get economy from the goat, too, right? Because if you, you play the priest, let's say you play a priest, buy something, and react with the sheepdog, you get the money. You will need plus buy for that to matter. Oh, you don't, you don't, it doesn't matter, though. It yeah, like, doesn't matter. If, hypothetically, you'd gotten, like, plus buy off of courtier, and then you react with the sheepdog and got the money, you could then use that on a second buy. But early in the game, you won't be able to right, buy. Right, buy. Right, right. Although, right, I mean, I, you could buy cavalry. Maybe you do, like, priest, trash, buy cavalry, react with sheepdog, trash something, you get more money, then you buy a second thing. Oh, yeah, you could do that. That's true. Mm -hmm. um, but then you're, you're, you're kind of drawing down with cavalry, which is why I don't, I don't think you want to be doing that too often. Uh, I think I prefer uh, Dan's opening. That was smart of Dan to, to draw a 5 2. <laughs> Nicely done, Dan. So now does N.A. Smith trash with this sheepdog or draw with this sheepdog? Uh, I think he buys a cavalry and then trashes. That's maybe. also an option. Yeah. Um, I can see that for just drawing because you want to hit five. Um... Yeah, I kind of, I, I mean, if you buy a cavalry, um, okay. And he wants to double trash. Okay, fair enough. Trashing is good. How would what work, Wandering Wonder? Yeah, I don't know. He, 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 he's wondering what you mean by hitting five. Oh, oh yeah, that, you're right. That, I don't know what I was talking about there. <laughs> I, I forgot that the draw can only happen after you bought something. Yeah, you're right. Drawing just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, you clearly just trash. Um, yeah. Bit of a brain fart. Yeah. The only thing I was thinking is potentially you can cavalry um, and then trash with, the, with cheap dog and then buy something else. That might have been a play there. But yeah, if you you would be able to buy like cavalry and uh, like a silver or something. Also, Dan Butcher missed, but he, he got the cavalry around, I guess. It's still kind of sad. Oh. That's a, yeah. That's still pretty unfortunate because they have to trigger a shuffle to do that. Right. Um, yeah. No, it's not. It's not good. Yeah. That that makes the the five two advantage look a lot less significant because the main reason to get the five two is so you can get that butcher into your deck early. I would love to right. have had like turn three butcher butcher an estate into a cavalry. Then you're triggering a new shuffle that's already got your butcher in it. That would look real nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, so Dan could get two threes, or he could turn the state to cavalry and draw on. But then he's got two cavalries in his deck. Yeah, right? there's a That's lot kinda... of cavalries to have. <laughs> I think you might just, like, want, like, double sheepdog? Or one, I don't know. He's taking a silver. You might just keep the coffer, even. I, I think Sheepdog is better than Coffer. I don't think I want another Silver. Yeah. Also, Sheepdogs are also a two type. Uh, not the. I mean. I would take a Silver over nothing, but I would rather keep the Coffer over by the Silver. Yeah. So, so Annie Smith could buy a Copper here and trash twice. So this is trash accomplished. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> not, 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 a great, um, not a great move, but... If you had three sheepdogs in hand, though, I would you could consider it. Well, you, as like a steward you don't play. need to buy the copper, though, because you can just play the first sheepdog normally without reacting it. 
Oh, oh, uh, oh, yeah. oh yeah, that's true. That's the best. <laughs> <laughs> That's a way better thing to do, obviously. Got those precious but points. Yeah. points. I think, I think Nate Smith's doing the sheepdog stuff, which seems stronger than Dan. He's like not doing it. Um. Yeah, it's, it's Dan, I would think. I mean, like especially like butcher and stuff around. You can do productive stuff with a sheepdog. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe just take a second butcher here. I, I mean, oh, he's not? opening Butcher is still just like, Dan should have a lead here. Butcher is just such a good card in this kingdom. And Dan's got two of them. I'm surprised Dan didn't cash the cavalry there. Um, It just seems like a not free card in your deck. And it's $4. Yeah, uh, I mean, estate's also not a great card in your deck. I don't, I don't have a strong opinion on whether to trash the estate or the cavalry. The argument for yeah. trashing the estate is, like, there is a world that's not that unlikely where you draw the cavalry and no other terminals and you're happy to play it. The argument for, for trashing the cavalry is you can get, like, a courtier or something in your deck sooner. Although, yeah. Dan actually doesn't have any good courtier targets, does he? So I guess that's less relevant. So Dan, Dan is just, like, really... really he, Dan, Dan is really just green fast. And Ending Smith is um, trying to build a bit more with the cheap dogs. And... Yeah. It kind of makes sense from Dan's starting position... Like, you know, Butcher Money, the 5-2 already inclines you in that direction, and early, taking early provinces with Butcher is, a, you know, less of a mistake than, like, taking normally early provinces normally feels like, because you can just, like, run down that province pile super fast. Yeah, um, so this is Butcher, but, what, would, you would you Butcher Butcher to Gold by Butcher here? Get the, the colony points? points. Uh, that's an I, I, interesting I, I, play. I can see that. I mean, I... As, yeah, yeah as, his, you're, you're not gonna, gonna he's no more actions than exactly. Like, I guess he's a cavalry. Um, yeah. But, uh, so, I mean, worst case, you can't play both butchers, and there's no downside to trashing the butcher, because, I mean, like, worst case, you're gonna gain any butcher back. Um, I think yeah, that yeah. is better than, oh, interesting, he takes the cavalry? That is not what I expected. He buys, he buys province. <laughs> okay. Just keep greening. This is so interesting. I don't know who's like. I don't know if any of stuff's gonna come together. Look at this. He's gonna trash a lot. Yeah. But <laughs> but not 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 play any cards really. Yeah, I mean, any Smith's gonna be super thin. Um, but there's a very real risk that Dan just you know gets those provinces milled by the butcher. Although he only has one butcher now. I'm not sure who's in the lead here. I, I, I think, the more I'm thinking about this, I think I prefer N.A. Smith's deck. Like, yeah, yeah, I prefer what he's doing. Dan's got two provinces, but that's um, countered by N.A. Smith's colonnade point lead, which makes it less significant. Um, and then, and now he's just going to kick off every turn. Yeah, he's going to draw the cheap dogs, he's going to trash the cheap dogs. He'll, he'll draw his whole deck here. Yeah. I assume you take action gold. Yeah, yeah I like action gold. Although, Although yeah. yeah. I'm not sure yeah, how like money he has gold. in his deck. Because, I mean, the other option could be, like, plus buy gold, but I don't think he's enough to want to buy two things. I think the first thing you buy is that I smith as a butcher here. Yeah. yeah. Um... <laughs> I don't know if you're listening in, Minion Pawn, but there's a tournament called Tournament Big Money. Uh, it's a... Uh, what are the rules? You had to have a certain like rating to qualify for it. So like, the top 16 people, rating-wise, qualify for the tournament, and then there's a double elimination bracket. We're currently looking at the loser's bracket round three, but these are also the top two seeds, so this is a pretty significant match, because one of the top two seeds is going home you know, somewhat prematurely here. It's $200 total up for grabs. I think first place takes 120 of it, second place gets uh, 50, and third place gets 30. We're in loser's bracket round three. I think I said that a second ago. Oh, actually, I should check whether they're even listening. They might not be listening in. So, 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 so and it's Smith could buy two fives here. He could take buy gold, draw it, and then cash the priest. Um, but then, but then he's got two coppers in his deck still. I don't know if that's what he wants to do. Yeah. Um, 
I think he definitely wants to buy, right? Because I think you, I think you want to buy two cards. Definitely a sheepdog and, and something else probably to react to sheepdog. Uh, I think I could see you could take like butcher, sheepdog, trash, a copper. I think works. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I could see just taking two cards as well. Interesting. Okay, he, he's... Wait, I don't like this order. I don't like this order at all. This looks bad. If his goal was to buy two things, then he could have just reacted... He, the, the courtier should have gained gold and buy, and then he can draw the gold with one sheepdog, trash the copper with the other sheepdog, and now he's still the position of having eight money and two buys. The difference is he has right. extra gold in this deck. Maybe he yeah. decided intentionally he doesn't want gold in his deck. I, I could see I, an I argument for that. Like, if you're just like, I, I really want to make sure I find a courtier in my opening hand to kick off the sheepdog chain. But I would think you'd take a, a free gold if you could get it here, and he just passed up on a free gold. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess you, you, you take a free gold here. So Dan's up has three provinces now. Um... But, but this, this this is basically be, going to be all about how often N.A. Smith, Smith finds courtier in his starting hand. Yeah, and like, N.A. Smith thing does have a real risk of dudding if you don't draw one of the two courtiers on top. Although, if you have right. four money, you if you have four money naturally, you could just buy a cavalry to kick it off, and then you're in a fine spot. That's true too. Um. But that requires you to have, like, say, like in lieu of courtier, you have, like, two golds or something in hand. He could just draw a hand right. that's, like, butcher and some sheepdogs and then be really sad. So that's, that's, that's an argument for having some golds in the deck. Um, that, you know, that tries actually aren't that bad. It's just because you can buy cavalry or something. Or it's an extra so coffer I don't think you want... as well can solve that problem. Like, if you have a single coffer, then one gold could be enough to kick off your turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Um, Were you asking me, Mist Gun? I'm not sure who that question is directed to. Wow. Um, okay, so my suggestion was... So at the time, uh, N.A. Smith had, like, I think seven money in hand, and he was reacting the courtier. What he did was he took action and buy, and then used the priest trash to trash one copper and end up hitting eight, and then he bought, like, a five and a three. My suggestion was just don't plan on playing the priest at all that turn, React for gold and buy, and then you draw the gold with the sheepdog, which gets you to nine, and then you react with the other sheepdog, play it as a way of the goat, and trash the copper. Now you're still back at eight coins with two buys. I, I, I'm saying reacting the courtier. I mean playing the courtier and choosing the thing. I don't know why I'm calling that reacting. Um, uh, he, he'd played the courtier and he's choosing the things. Um, but then you'd have the same end state of one less copper, eight coins, two buys, but one more gold in your deck, which I think is a positive for his deck. I don't know, I copper's, like, really, really, really bad, bad for his deck, though. though. Like, like, wait, you, you trashed one copper, by the way. Like, he trashed one copper with his, um, or did he, have, did he trash two that turn? Maybe, let me double check. Okay, he okay, that's fair, that's fair. That's his line does end up trashing one more copper, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Which I think you want, I think that being thin is so important in this deck because, like, uh, basically, like, copper doesn't help you at four, and it, it doesn't help you uh, to, like, buy a cavalry, and it doesn't help you line up court, or, like, start with court gears in your hand. So that was pretty cute. He tried to trigger himself with court gear on top. But I think he's, he, didn't, he didn't get lucky, but he had a 50 50 chance of top decking court gear. Um, just now, and I expected that. Let's see. I'm surprised that N.A. Smith did not take a province last turn. Yeah, yeah now he's going to be down. Well. Okay, so Wandering Winter is yeah, yeah, province to province by Butcher. Uh, I definitely like province to province as a start. I don't think... I mean, like, you could do, like, cavalry to cavalry and try to, like, draw or something. Uh, and you could buy a province naturally. But then, I'm not sure how big that shuffle is, but it doesn't have your butcher in it. Well, on the upside, too, your provinces are missing. And the downside, too, your provinces aren't missing. 
Providence yeah. feels good to me. I like, I like Providence. 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 I mean, triggering the, like the shuffle isn't is kind of a well. You don't even. It's not even a good shuffle to trigger because you have provinces in, in your the provinces. You want to mill them, so it's not even clear that this is like a shuffle you really want to trigger. Also, you'd be throwing a cavalry in there, so I think you definitely just like stop here and take yeah. province to province. Yeah, I think butcher missing is enough of a reason not to trigger. Um, but to answer yeah. Miss Gun's question, cavalry into cavalry is going to draw you two cards. Dan's deck doesn't really have a whole lot of actions in it, and you would have four coins plus two coppers. You'd have to draw like a silver to hit province. So I went for doing that would be you actually score six points rather than emptying a province without scoring. Um, but I, I'm on team butcher province into province. I'm not totally sure what I buy. Second butcher makes some sense. Buy just another silver. Buy a buy duchy. All, all, there's a lot of good buys here. I'm not totally sure what I'll buy, but I think province into province is definitely a good move. Actually, yeah, don't buy duchy. That's, that's terrible. You want, you want to keep the coffers. Yeah, butcher seems fine. Oh, he takes duchy. Oh, he does buy duchy. Uh, yeah, I think butcher, duchy, and silver were the three things that were on my mind there. Well, look at Dan's hand now. It's horrendous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, the question is just, can Dan keep his points lead? And the answer is, I'm not sure. It might just be on draw luck, right? Like, if Dan lining up a Butcher with a Providence early in his shuffle would be huge, there's a chance that Butcher's, like, on the bottom, and then he's really sad. Does he have two Butchers now? No, he doesn't. He trashed one. Um, yeah. Yeah, but I, yeah, I, the only reason I'm not huge in the Dutch is, like, you really gotta empty Provinces, and you really... Like, uh, you want coffers. Coffers are, like, really nice. You turn a cavalry into a province, maybe. I don't know. I don't like spending a coffer there. So, N.A. Smith can probably almost triple here already. Yeah. Um, the the real risk is N.A. Smith's next turn. Like, if he if he draws a goal again next turn, he's in a great spot. But his deck is a little rickety. Yeah, as, as any Smith, I like, like yeah, yeah, I think, I think you want to try to like, top deck your court gear maybe somehow, if it's possible. Uh, he tried to last time by like triggering with a cheap dog. Um, like, if you put three cards in your deck and draw two of them, and then you like you can, you might be able to leave it. It's, it's pretty unlikely though, honestly. Maybe it's not worth going after. I don't think risk, like, I don't, yeah, I, I agree with Wondering Wonder's rhetorical question or the implication. Of it. I don't. <laughs> I don't think that doubling is really that risky because chances are of like if Dan doubled that turn, he's probably gonna win whether you doubled or not. I think he would have thirty five points, and in best case scenario, you take two provinces next turn and you're just toast. Uh, so I think you just have to say like if if any or not if any if Dan can double, I've lost anyway. And so the argument against doubling would not be to me, uh oh, Dan can win next turn because if I don't double and Dan doubles next turn, I'm I'm not gonna win next turn regardless. Uh, the argument against doubling might be, if I think I could, like, triple or something next turn, maybe I'd rather not put another province in my deck. But doubling, I think, sounds fine to me. Because uh, as N.A. Smith, you really got to start putting points on the board pretty soon here. Uh, what's this? Province courtier? Province sheepdog? Probably take a courtier. I'm not sure which one of those is better for reliability. Courtier probably, oh, because yeah. courtier can buy you a cavalry if you need to continue the turn. No, I doubt you make sense as well. Um, just take the points. Not a bad starting hand. You got at least one sheepdog and a courtier. Right. So, but then actually, yeah. yeah. I guess he. I don't think Eddie Smith has any concept of how bad Dan's deck is. He doesn't even have a courtier in it. He just literally just bought pitch pushers. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I don't know how you could like. I guess put your money, but like buy it. Like gain some gold if you're gonna buy put your money. Don't just like. <laughs> It seems insane to me what he did. Yeah, I mean, I like where any of this deck went. The the courtier plus sheepdog stuff is pretty neat. Okay, well he he does this is he does stall here. Yeah. So uh, what do you take here as in a Smith? You can this is this is the old I drew all my Smithies and none of my villages thing. Oh, the King's Cavalry. I like that. I think that was a good play. Um, it's unfortunate he did not find another sheepdog. He's got. I mean, he must have a ton of sheepdogs down there, right? He has eight of them, and six cards left. Am I wrong? I'd say he's got four sheepdogs down there. Yeah, yeah he has four down there. He just he, he should just buy, buy a cavalry gun, I think. Yeah, maybe so. Um, I'd have to count it out, but like there could be an argument for doing that. 
I mean, if you get to play the courtiers, you're actually making up the money. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I th yeah. You could probably play some of them for action gold too. And, or not sure that you can't because the one, the terminal one you play, you have to play through five, right? Or I don't. I'm not sure. Bicolo says I he has double in hand. I don't see it. What? He's, he looked like he was one court and short to me. Keep one of those cheap dogs around to react to the courtier to. So yeah, he now, just, now he's he just, he just he, he's, he's got it. Yeah, he's yeah. he's one. He butcher. This is twice in a row where I felt like the early province buy was a major mistake that cost the player the game. Although in this case it was Dan's. The I mean again, but butcher money it it is real fast, but yeah, oh yeah. uh, I mean, it's I don't know. Dan also yeah Dan yeah, did it's... have the the butcher bottom deck that like one in eleven chance of that. That's a pretty bad starting shuffle. Um, right, right, right. What do we do uh, here? Uh, yeah. But it really felt like Dan was more than one turn. Like Dan was, Dan was, um, Dan was two turns at least away from emptying provinces, right? So like, it wasn't particularly close. So maybe if he draws his butcher, it's like a little closer. But I, I still think that M.A. Smith's deck was would have won. Dan with a luckier um, shuffle in that final sequence of draws could have pulled out a win. Still, like he sees his butcher on top or something and lowers provinces. I think he might have been in a good spot. Um, I don't think it was like completely dead in the water or anything. But definitely well, last well, Dan, if, Dan, if Dan had nailed one more province, he would not have won. Like, he... Because he, N.A. Smith easily could have province doubled Dutchie there, too, I think. Like, without any issues. He could probably province triple Dutchie, even, I think. So, I don't, I don't know. I think he would have had to mill, you know... Yeah, milling one province wasn't enough, I don't think. Yeah. Um, Let's see what we so. got here. Uh, this looks like an Inventor Mega Turn, I think. Draw's a little scarce, but I think it should be enough. You can set aside the, the jump cards with Sanctuary to get a real thin deck. You know, you got action with Way of the Ox. But Way of the Ox plus Inventor does require a good bit of draw. So I think I would play with Alchemist here. Um, Alchemist, Too bad. and then Inventors, and then you have a bunch of plus buy naturally off of your Sanctuaries, and then you buy a bunch of stuff. Uh, something like that. Uh, actually, well, then again, we also have colonies around, which I wasn't really thinking about. Maybe you're not doing full inventory mega turn, you get some platina, and then you, you buy colonies. I could see an argument for Camel Train. Camel Train makes getting platinum very easy. Um, and if I'm not if I'm not going for like the massive inventory mega turn, you know, getting a bunch of platina could be good. I'm not sure. Uh, I think you definitely play with some inventors, some sanctuaries, and some alchemists. I'm not sure how much you commit to like play a million inventors and uh, like reduce everything to zero and try to buy everything versus right. do that as like a segue into platinum colony. So each inventor play basically requires two draw because you have to alk something and you have to inventor. So that's like, so each inventor play, you need two alchemists basically. I mean, then obviously there's, a, I, I still think it's, it seems close to me. I, like you also, yeah, I'm not sure if Inventor Mega Turn is good here. It's really close. Um, so Dan, uh, yeah. he took a potion, right, and then undid it. I guess he wants to reconsider. Yeah. Also, also, I see Wandering Winder in the chat has, has complained about my characterization of Dan's deck. Uh, it's definitely possible that I, I, I underrated it a bit and underrated how how bad a shuffle walk was. So, uh... Don't, Don't take my word for possible. <laughs> I think, I think um, on four three here, I like militia overlord. On three four, I think I might just take overlord outright. Um, and a Smith takes camel train overlord. That's interesting. Uh, Overlord's really nice if you can play it as count early on. Like you line up a good hand, you trash a bunch all at once. And if it clads with your militia or I guess your camel train in this case, you can just play to sanctuary and still be pretty happy. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, Overlord's very nice here. Camel Train and Overlord's a bit of a combo, too, because Overlord's a very expensive card. Um, and, um, Camel Train lets you basically get them for, you know, for just an action. Um, and, and so, yeah, so I, I think that's why Andy Smith opened Camel Train. It's like, I've, I've played a few games of Camel Train Overlord, and it's really, really strong. Um, 
Yeah, this is not a bad kingdom for Camel Train. Between Overlord and Platinum, there's some cards that are decent to get from it. Uh, yeah, you can also... This is a little sad for Dan. This is twice in a row that his key early buy has missed his shuffle. Because his Overlord is somewhere down there in those bottom few cards. Bottom deck is oh, a little yeah. less unlikely with Fool Around, because you take Silvers and those get in the way. But it's still sad. Yeah. Yeah, you could demand something here, as Truffles was saying. It'll give you an extra card if you want to count next turn. Mm -hmm. Um... So you'll be able to cast an extra card with count if you demand. Um, and then I guess the, the card you demand is, is probably going to be a stop card. So, um, yeah, so what does Dan have on top now? He hit... Let's see. Um, so turn three, Dan had two estates, two covers. Lucky. Oh, now I see it anyway. There's no point in counting. Um, yeah, yeah. The, the militia hit does hurt for N.A. Smith, though, because I assume, like, had he not had a discard... He would have likely used the Overlord as count to trash three cards. And yeah. uh, now, uh, what's he do? Probably just Sanctuary is one of them. I don't know. Maybe he malicious. Oh, oh he camel trains. Interesting. See, now he's going to put two Overlords in a shuffle. Three that's really nice. Shuffle. Oh, this would be a real nice hand for a militia attack. Well, I don't think Dan's going to do that. Yeah, so that demand helped him uh, trash an extra card. Yeah, I like the demand play. Yeah, so now I'm taking... I don't know, do you take two overlords here as Dan? Uh, it could just be two sanctuaries. Oh, he's going to go for the two overlords. Maybe you buy sanctuary here. Is, does he have draw cards in his hand next turn? No, right? So maybe you buy sanctuary here and buys overlord next turn. Yeah, that's also possible. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they're, they're going about it in a roundabout way, which makes sense, because Overlord's nice and flexible and good at trashing. But I think the places this is going to end up, it's going to be having some Sanctuaries and Inventors. And uh, I wouldn't mind having Sanctuary in my deck, for sure. Yeah. So, so Dan actually uh, exiles Alchemist and then buys Potion, or demands Potion. I like that. I like um, that. Yeah, it looks good. we will have two Alchemists in the shuffle now. So they both got one... Uh, I, I'm actually liking the, the Camel Train and Alchemist. I hadn't even thought about that, to be honest. But uh, you, don't, you don't want to get a bunch of potions, because potions like an awful card in your deck, and you're trading off a lot right. of stuff. But you can Camel Train for Alchemists to get Alchemists quickly anyway. And that is kind of a key card, given how limited the draw is. Yeah. Yeah. And it's with this hand of three overlords. <laughs> Sanctuary play makes sense. You can play the third one as the first village. Getting in the militia attack. Yeah, so then it's going to chill on the overlords. I think he's got a, a good number in his deck. It's not like there's that many uh, five card cards you want to play. Um, I think I like Dan's position right now. You know? I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. Dan's deck does look a little thicker, which I guess is an argument in A. Smith's favor, but Dan's also got those alchemists. Yeah, I think I prefer Dan's Yeah, I just... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's got two alchemists, and he's, gonna, he's got a third next play. He'll, he'll, he'll have four pretty soon. Meanwhile, Lana Smith has, uh... Well, now he's, now he's doing the same thing, but... Smith could catch up. Like, it'd be a nice draw. Maybe he like plays uh, one Overlord as an Ox and then exiles two Alchemists and buys a third Alchemist. I, I could see him ending up splitting even on Alchemists if he draws well. Uh, if he doesn't, then he might be in a bad spot. Because I think uh, having a majority of the Alchemists seems nice. So I, I think I play this Overlord as a Sanctuary. I mean, I guess he's thinking about playing Count again, maybe, or something? I don't know. His other option um, could be uh, Camel Train Alchemist, then Buy Alchemist. Yeah, yeah. But then, you know, he he's, he is like $6 in a... Oh, he does, he is doing that. Interesting. So he's really going hard for the Alchemist, then. Oh, well, now he's undoing it, so maybe not. Yeah, like... 
Yeah, yeah Wander, Wander, uh, Wander, uh, Wander is a point, too. He's good cards down there, so he unfortunately draws the copper. But, like, if he drew a camel train off that, then it's just, like, you know. There's pretty high upside to, to playing that as a sanctuary, I think. So what do we buy here? Alchemist seems obvious. Inventor now? I don't know. I just, I don't think I believe in the Inventors at all, to be honest. Uh, well, yeah, like, you maybe, maybe they're good. But I think you want colonies, and they're not going to help you get colonies that much, you know? Yeah. I mean, if you're not playing the inventor thing, I can see an argument for just taking nothing. Yeah, I would take nothing. If I'm not doing inventors, I would take nothing, yeah. Overlord, okay. Yeah, so. Well, it seems fine. Yeah. yeah Sanctuary is going to be great here. You know, as it always is. But. Yeah. Uh, Sanctuary is basically, for those of you who don't know, is, is like. Dominion, the whole point of, like, the, the victory mechanic is that, like, green cards get in the way. Um, they don't, like, their, like, victory cards um, make your deck worse. But Sanctuary basically negates that problem, because it lets you just, like, put your victory cards in exile to never see them ever again. Um, so it's, like, a really strong card for, like, um, I wouldn't say it's really strong, but it's a, it's a pretty strong card. Um, it, it's pretty high up there. It's like around junk dealer and upgrade. They all have their own benefits. A nice little can yeah. trasher or technically exiler. Yeah. yeah. This, this overlord looking really bad because Dan's not, not going to be able to buy alchemist now. Uh. Because if he if if Dan if Dan uh doesn't have this debt right, he just takes the last two alchemists. Well, is it actually going to... Oh, never mind, it's Dan's turn. I was, I was about to say, is any Smith going to take the last two alchemists? Then I realized it was not any Smith's turn. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this the Overlord buy is actually kind of hurting them. Because Dan being able to take these two last alchemists versus not seems like a huge difference. Uh, I would play yeah. that as Sanctuary, which he does, to draw on, and he still can't hit it. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Now, do you risk it in exile and alchemist? Probably not, right? Probably play the militia. Uh, Try to stop any. Hmm. Yeah, I think. I mean, militia is like more reliably just kind of good for you, kind of bad for them. I I definitely see the the argument for deny alchemist because you know that any Smith can take two next turn if he wants to. It's, it's not clear to me. I mean, he is looking at his deck right now. It's not clear to me he's going to reach the potion. Dan does go for the exile. Well, I guess Ennis Smith can also just deny if he doesn't find potion, which he probably will. That is funny, if they end up in a situation where each of them denied their opponent the final alchemist, and they both just have two <laughs> sitting on the mat. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Yeah, wondering when there's a point, too. You could have attacked, and, um, like... If you attack, it's pretty unlikely your opponent's able to get two alchemists because they have to draw potion and camel train, and you know they have a three card hand. Well, they have a three card starting um, hand, but they've also got some alchemists in there, so it might not be a three card hand by the end of it. And it's myth has like two alchemists, maybe. I'm not sure. Oh, he's forced too. Okay, never mind. Okay. He's kind of close there, but he draws in the end, so he'll end up taking those alchemists or that alchemist. Yes, this is. So. Yeah, so that Overlord buy might be like the the, the, the demise of Dan in this game. Um, he's gonna lose the split six four, and uh, yeah, or five four. He's gonna lose it five four. Yeah, actually. one one of them is stuck in perpetuity on the exile mat of Dan. <laughs> yeah. 
They will both technically have five alchemists to their name. Yeah, it is looking pretty good for N.A. Smith, I'd say. I'm not sure what advantage Dan has here. New strategy, just deny all 10 sanctuaries. So N.A. Smith's uh, Overlord League comes back to bite him. <laughs> it only take 10 turns, one sanctuary per turn. Seems perfectly good strategy. You don't have to gain it, you can just like exile all the sanctuaries. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. I forgot, I forgot there's Ox. <laughs> so you could, you could do it in less than 10 turns, but... Um. So I guess next step now is probably get platinum. Yeah. Like I would like a turn soon where I exile a platinum and buy a platinum. That sounds quite nice. Um. Yeah, the overlords are not going to be amazing for all too long because like... How many things do you want to play with them besides just playing them as the cantrip? Yeah. Not, yeah. You can ox it, and then, I mean, if you're playing your militia, and you can get in a camel train. Truffles was right, though. Dan should have bought nothing on that turn. And now he's gotten, getting burned by the the um, faux pas that many people make, which is feeling the need to spend all your money. Um... Yeah, debt can be really awkward with potions around, because you don't know exactly when the potion's going to come up, and you're really sad to see the potion in the debt hand, because then the potion's not paying off your debt, and you're also not using it. Yeah, I also don't, I would have played on his hand, tried to, I don't know why he stopped there, with the, the plain militia. Um, he could have, uh, he could have tried to, he could have played a sanctuary and, and drawn on. Let's see, yeah, this is looking good for N.A. Smith. Exile and a bunch of stuff. I think I'd exile that camel train now. No, he's keeping it around. Exile it now? Yeah, you just can play it. You get you play Overlord with Camel Train, right? You don't right. want another... Yeah, like if, if you need the Camel Train, use one of the Overlords. They're mostly doing nothing for you anyway. But I wouldn't want to have the Camel Train on my deck anymore. Just pitch it. You can't even play it this turn. Maybe he's gotten attached. That Camel Train was his first ever buy of this kingdom. It has sentimental value. <laughs> and it's the Hoarder. <laughs> He's keeping it. <laughs> does he just buy nothing here? Uh, does he have nine in his deck? I think he can hit nine, right? Like if his last overlord gets used as a counter or something. Hmm. Are you talking about Dan or N.A. Smith? N.A. Smith. Like, you, you could buy silver if you needed to hit nine. But I think he's already got enough money in his deck to hit 9 without an extra silver. And all I really want to do is hit 9 and buy platinum, and then things will go smoothly from there. Yeah. yeah. Dan is less thin. Yeah. yeah. Probably just the two golds now, I assume, for Dan. I mean, not amazing, right, but he's, the, he's got to exile two gold. I go two golds here, but I don't know if I feel good about it. I'm not, I'm not sure I what else you're buying. You can take two idols and try to curse them, because they can't trash the curses, and I guess they technically score points, and maybe the idols are enough to hit nine, and then you go into the... No, you can't take two out. You only take one idol there yet. Golds, I think, is the clear option. Um, yeah. The gold was just a nice stepping stone to get you up to platinum. 
Yeah. Although Andre Smith. Smith. Sorry. Go, go ahead. I was, I was gonna say, and Smith looks like he's not gonna be a pad in this turn, but if she should get a next turn, um, a free exile some stuff. Or maybe you'll get it this turn actually. You got six dollars, eight dollars now. Yeah, this this is. I mean, it's platinum in hand. He can play the camel train as an ox, and then play the militia, and then play like overlord as any number of things to hit nine. I guess I played as the monument for the extra point. You could play it as the count. You could play it as uh, inventor. Bunch of ways to hit yeah. it. Yeah. There's no cheap cards I particularly want, so I would take the monument over the inventor. It's a bonus point. Not going to be super significant, but it's. I guess better than not having it. Yeah. Well, inventor is one coin, right? Like, the inventor is. Everything costs one mass, so it's only one coin also. Right. Well, he would have hit. Uh, yeah, I thought he was going to hit eight out of the way. Did I miscount? I don't know. Perhaps I miscounted. I, I just looked. Yeah, I was, I was thinking he could hit uh, platinum with either inventor or monument. It's possible I was mistaken by that. Yeah, he had two covers, right? And only um, played one of them. All right. Just, yeah, as, as Dan, the resign button is, I think, looking pretty compelling right about now. Mm-hmm. This game hurts, though, because I think that, like, the, um, like, a lot of, um... Yeah, I feel like that basically a lot of what went wrong was that one Overlord buy, which, like, changed the split from 6-4 to 5-4. Like, 6-4 in his favor to 5-4 against him. I guess that seems really, really big. Um, so, that's, yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah, that, that did seem... He also bottom-decked his Overlord, which kind of sucked, although... He made the best of the bad situation there with the demand play plus the count. So I'm not sure if that yeah. explains it. The problem is... That's the other thing. Yeah, from here on out, I think this this kingdom is like simple enough and sort of like deterministic-ish that there's not a whole lot of room for Dan to like outplay N.A. Smith and come back. Like you're going to have Alchemist's top deck, so you're not going to draw too badly. You're just going to buy a few Platinum and then start buying Colony. And I'm not sure like what, what you do that's fancy enough to come back from being like two, two turns behind to Platinum. Yeah, um, I agree. This is pretty resignable. The other thing for Dan is that he he was the one who did the demand potion thing first, exile the alchemists, and so I'm sure Enesmith would have had the idea himself. But <laughs> whenever you do something first, you never know if your opponent saw the idea from you or they they came out with themselves. Yeah, he resigns. Yeah, I, that I would assume if I was playing the other top seed in the tournament, that they like if I had a good idea, they're they're probably also thinking the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think it was like a crazy, crazy idea. What? Every once in a while that'll yeah. happen. Like, I, I forget what it was, but I remember like my game six versus E Honda. He did something nifty, and I was like, oh, that's a good idea. I'm going to copy that in my turn. But usually, I think yeah. you can assume that your opponent did the right thing. Way to pick rats is interesting. You could actually trash with rats, uh, and then once you're done trashing, just play all your rats as cantrips forever. Um,. That actually, Spice Virgin is still better, I think, but you like rats would be better at trashing estates than hideout is. I can definitely see rats getting bought here. Yeah, yeah, I want rats. Um, and then you got you always have the autopilot threat. <laughs> well, I don't think it's gonna be important here at all. Because governor and there's, there's, there's no. yeah, that's that's true. I guess keeping the um the rats around threatens an autopilot. Although, uh, Governor, I think, I forget the exact stats, but Governor is, if not the most, definitely one of the most likely cards to cause the game to enter in provinces. Like, the numbers are like 18% or something really low of games with Governor in three piles, just because it encourages you to take provinces really early. I'm actually surprised the number's that high. Like, I, I, I don't, I can't even, I'm trying to think of Governor games that play which didn't end in provinces. I can't think of any. I think like, there's some kingdoms where Governor ends up being like a, an engine piece rather than like the main payload like you play governor into bridge yeah. or something like that and that can end in provinces um those yeah probably. but often governor ends up being a sort of like quasi monolithic strategy where you just like use governor to gain golds use governor to turn golds in the province and then the game's over 
Right. 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 Now, what do we open? Which here? I think what. Um, <laughs> you could open Wayfarer on your cursed gold turn for zero, which would be kind of cute. Uh, I don't know if that's a good idea. It probably isn't. Um, hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, because you already take the money from the cursed gold, so it's not like the cost reduction helps you at all. I really don't like having the 3-6 the hand, and both of them have it. I really don't know what I want. I'd love to be able to open with, like, a 4-5, maybe, like, Spice Merchant Puka or Rath Puka or Spice Merchant Governor or something along those lines. 3-6 yeah. just seems so I like Storm, Storm Spice Merchant, actually. Because if, if you see the Storm Room before the Spice Merchant, you, rat, you pig it. Um, and then if you see it after the Spice Merchant, you, like, you, uh, you clean up your shuffle. And so I think Storm is good. The cycling is good here. Yeah. You know, so I would open Storm to like Spice Merchant, I think. It does feel gross having to, to take a curse just to get the one extra coin to buy a four-cost card. But I think yeah. you, you'd have to do that, something like that, I think. Uh, Water Winter doesn't want the curse at all. What are you just like buying a silver? I guess just like st oh, storm, storm. That's interesting. I actually like those that idea. That's in huh? So you, you buy two storerooms. You're kind of very likely to see one in your first shuffle. Then you just like discard a ton of cards for draw. Discard everything else for coins. Then you have got a four in your deck, and you're most of the way through the shuffle. Uh, and then you can just like pig them later. Yeah, it's not insane double storeroom, but I would. I think I'd prefer the Spice Merchant. Is Puka even um, better than Spice Merchant? Like, if you've already taken a, a storeroom, I feel like storeroom plays a lot nicer with Spice Merchant than Puka. Yeah. The the problem to to respond to Counto's comment, I'm not worried about the points from Curse, right? Like the negative one VP yeah. is basically totally relevant. It's just the extra jump card early in, in the game in your deck. Like even that very first shuffle, having one extra curse in your deck and then going to the first reshuffle is really painful, whether I trash it later or not. So Ennis Smith opens with the Wrath, which I think is also yeah. I think that maybe I would open Wrath actually now that now that I saw him do it. I think I think Wrath is um. I mean, money's not that big an issue because of course gold, but you'd rather get rid of your states. I think. Yeah. So they won't do that. Uh... So the thing I was thinking about with the rats versus the spice merchant is if you're opening with a storeroom anyway, it's kind of nice to be able to draw extra cards because you discard them for treasures and stuff like that. And yeah. spice merchant draws you one more card than rats does. Now the advantage to a rat is you're trashing your states rather than your coppers. And you usually want to trash a state right. before coppers because coppers at least help you buy things. But if you got storeroom at the end of that, that you're discarding it all for one coin anyway, that kind of makes the difference between copper and a state less substantial. And so I would think, like, with a storeroom specifically as your turn one by, I would have thought rat, uh, Spice Merchant is nicer turn two. Like, the rat is not a bad idea. You want to trash those estates anyway, and rat seems probably the best way to do that. Yeah. I will say, there's going to be a really interesting end game if they both have rats in their deck, because, like... They can just remodel rats into duchies, <laughs> like on the last turn. Um, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of that, yeah. like thinking about what your opponent can do in the last turn. Because these these rats are all like they're cantrips, so they're they're probably going to get a lot of them. There's no like harm to getting them. The the rats will also be very nice to have in your starting hand if your opponent is playing governor. Um, right. Yeah. And just like turn them into governors, turn them into duchies, whatever makes it the governor remodel real scary. I, de I definitely yeah, love I rats I'd... eventually. I would have thought Spice Merchant first would be nice, but like the rats make sense. Yeah. So N.A. Smith going for Wayfarer and Hideout. So Dan did this weird thing where he had five with the Curse Gold and he just bought a Candlestick Maker. He didn't play the Curse Gold. Hmm. I do not know about that. On turn three. Candlestick Maker. Candlestick Maker, I guess, could be nice with Wayfarer. Because, I mean, you, you can get a bunch of those real cheap. Maybe, like, if you, you took a curse later, you have an extra buy, the, can, the Wayfarer also wouldn't cost zero. But, yeah, I don't so, know, the, yeah. the five seemed not bad to me. I could take Governor there. Candlestick Maker itself is not, like, an amazing card or anything. You can pick it, I guess. So it's not, it can't hurt too much. Yeah. I mean, I just like, the, I like having the draw, you know? 
Um, and like the deck's kind of thick, so like Wayfarer is nice, but like you want to, you know, you have to, you have to get, yeah. Usually you have to you play a village before it. Usually, like so you have to hide out before Wayfarer, and it just seems like I'd rather have the Governor, which like reliably draws you two more cards than it draws your opponent. The hideout will have nice interaction with rats late in the game. Like you could hide out a rat to draw an extra card. Um, I mean, functionally, what you're doing is sort of like avoiding the effect of having to trash with hideout because hideout's normally like a hand size reducer, right. and then trashing rats with it makes it more neutral. Um, right, right. That's true. But it makes the hideout, I guess, a little bit more plausible. Dan gets one now as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I guess Dan can do like Wayfair or something on this turn, which is nice. <laughs> Let's see. Ah, uh, what do you trash here? I guess you trash the estate and you can buy another Wayfarer. I think that's what I would do. I don't really want any other stuff too much. Yeah, the thing is terminal space. Like he's one hideout now. Um, one uh, just wants to thin, and I guess buy candlestick maker, which is better than nothing. And a Smith does yeah. want the wayfarer. The Dan Brooks could take up in the wayfarer here this turn. True, although not I mean, you sort of you <laughs> take wayfarer. <laughs> yeah. The Wayfarers are also worth two points each, you know. I guess that's not the most significant thing, but they are the obelisk pile. Oh, yeah, that's true. Like, even if I didn't really want, like, a Wayfarer in my deck, really, I would take a free Wayfarer and then just, like, pig it forever. So I've got sort of two free points. Yeah. Wandering Winter wanted to hide out over Governor. I could see that. Governor's a real good card, though. I I just think that, like, you already have these rats in your deck. Just, you can just, like, Governor's draw, like, doing something for your deck. These hideouts seem kind of... Yeah, I mean, the best case for hideouts is they let you use your wayfarers productively instead of just playing them as pigs. But... Yeah. I mean, Governor's a card you can never really go wrong with. Oh, contraire. What what are you contraring? That you can't go wrong with Governor? Oh, I, I don't know. I, are there games where I've skipped Governor? Probably at some point. I feel like you pretty much always skip Governor. Like, worst case scenario, it's like a nice little laboratory for you. But a flexible laboratory. Yeah, I don't think I, I can't even I can't remember skipping Governor. Probably have at some point. Actually, let me check. Thankfully, uh, Marcus was nice enough to add me to the uh, the spreadsheet, so I can check my stats now. Oh, uh, <laughs> someone pointing out Wandering Winter's very American <laughs> pronunciation or spelling of au contraire. <laughs> okay. I was also American enough to not even notice it. Uh, <laughs> I didn't notice either. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. Oh, I only get Governor 89% of the time. Actually lower than I thought, but still very high. <laughs> um, anyways, where do we stand now? I like N.A. Smith's position. He's got, I think, more total of the cards that matter. I like having Wayfarers, I like having hideouts. I don't know, doesn't, doesn't Dan have two governors, though? Am I crazy? Does N.A. Smith have one? I get, let me see. Gains the governor. Yeah, Dan does have two. Okay, that, that's a card that matters. You're right. Um, yeah. 
Um, I was thinking of Hideout and Wayfair, but yeah, the governor should not be discounted. Apparently the stats have... I'm using an old spreadsheet, so maybe the stats have gone up in the last few days, and I'm now up to 90%. Only to buy uh, Governor more and get those numbers up. Dan also has oh, just yeah. an absolutely obscene number of rats. <laughs> he has so many rats, Dan. It, it's a good number of rats to have. I, w- I would love to basically yeah. have a guaranteed rats in my starting hand, because yeah. especially in those final, like early on, getting governors off them if my opponent remodels is great. Late in the game, that threat of like, can my opponent get a duchy if I remodel a gold could be really significant yeah. if you're trying to come back from behind. Yeah. yeah. And then it's myth, like, like the, the, the like, like yeah, yeah, it's just, Dan is so, like, I wouldn't remodel anything as any Smith. I guess, they, I guess if you're playing, I mean, maybe he'll just play, like, with uh, hideouts and wayfarers uh, and not even really go for governors. I don't know. <laughs> it would surprise me if any Smith does not touch the governors at some point this game. Yeah, that, that seems crazy. So we, we have the rats pile out, but not the way it normally happens. <laughs> the slow and steady uh, rats pile out. Curses, rats, and wayfarers can all run very easily. Oh, yeah. wow. Um, that nice bit doesn't have that many buys, right? Like, I, you can safely take governor, wayfarer, wayfarer governor here, I think. It's not like... Yeah. But... Yeah, you could um, you could take another hideout. You could even just take another wayfarer. Yep, he takes another wayfarer. I think Dan's got pileouts on the mind. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that seems to. I wonder what order you play your cards in as Dan. Do you trash the curse with the hideout? Do you trash a rat with the hideout? Um, I feel like there's a good answer there. I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> so, uh, does one of those draw more than the other? Yeah, yeah rat, trash trashing the rats. rats. Wait, Wait, does it? Why is trashing the rats uh, find out better? Uh, trashing the rats gives you a card, right? Well, if you... If you Trash the rats, that's one less cantrip in your hand, though, that you could have played. I feel like this should be easier than I'm making it out to be. Which one of those draws more in total? So if I, like, if I trash the curse of the hideout and cantrip two rats, I draw three. If I trash the rats of the hideout and play the other rats to trash the curse, I draw three. But then I have a rats in my deck? Or, well, now I don't because the rats are empty. Um, I get yeah, they probably do end up being equivalent. So they may be... Could it matter, like, which cards I see first? I don't know. It it likely doesn't matter, I think, now that I'm thinking about this. Yeah. The good news is NA Smith looks, looks like Dan's going to win, so it looks like we're going to we're gonna be tied up. And, oh, that, and that can't and happen at all. Tournament of Big Money is all about 4-1 victories. <laughs> I'm very upset if both players have at least two wins. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's... it's uh, So, yeah, so I, I mean, if Dan draws, can he win this turn is the question, I think. Um, he has, uh, what does he have, one storeroom and one candlestick figure, so he has three buys, and he has two governors. Um, he could, I think he technically has enough gains, I don't know if he can realistically do it. He would, like, he could, uh, no, wait, no, I, I was going to say gain a rat, and then he could remodel another rat into wave. no. It doesn't work for more than one reason. Yeah, I'm actually not sure Dan has enough gains. I'm not sure he can use the governor gains in a way that gets Wayfair very effectively. Well, um, why can't he? He can just remodel a uh, first rats to Wayfair, right? As long as he doesn't gain a gold or something. Or if he gains a gold, he can also remodel rats to Wayfair. Yeah. So that should be possible. Oh, that, that, and then that's he has to buy. Yeah, he just needs to not gain any cards before he finds his governor. Then he turns to... Oh, well. And it's been something in lower piles. But, uh, oh, now, so it's, now it's hard for different reasons. Now he's got to score a bunch of points. That was a really smart play. <laughs> that was really cool. So, is, N.A. Smith yeah. is saying, you have one turn to win. And if not, I'm going to take the two curses. Can Dan win in one yeah. turn? 
I don't know. It's a, a risky play. Um, I mean, I mean it, it feels better than, like, 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 like I guess he could have not taken the curse. Like, if, if, he, if, he, if, he, if he takes the, if he takes the curse, then Dan can tie all the turn with a three-way pair of the two curses. Uh, um, if he doesn't take the curse... Um, so how many curses does Dan you don't, have in his deck? Do we know? Uh, there's eight gone, five of the trash, one in each of their hands. There's one more in one of their decks somewhere. Well, Dan is a curse in his hand. Is that what you're talking about? So there's one curse unaccounted for. There's one in each of their hands and five in the trash. There's eight total missing. And the question is, Dan needs to score seven points. I think Dan can do a province pretty easily with a good draw. And it's really easy, I think, if Dan just gets to, like, trash another curse. Um, I'm wondering why Dan is playing this rats before playing the Wayfair. Maybe he has a good reason for that, but I'm not sure what it is. I guess he maybe wanted to, to remodel the Wayfair with the governor. Even that's not guaranteed, because remodeling a Wayfair into province only really scores you three points, because you know with, like, high degree of certainty your opponent's going to get a duchy off of it. Um, oh, yeah, that's true. It doesn't score you three points. Scores you one point because the wayfarer is two points. <laughs> scores you one. Oh, that, yeah, you're right. You're right. It's not. So, yeah, it's probably more the silver gain aspect than. Um, I guess. You do, why, yeah. why, no, why would you even not want the silver? Like the only reason you not want a silver is to not reduce the cost of wayfarer so that you could remodel it. But if you're not wanting, yeah, remodel, that's, then I don't know. Um, that's, that's a one point remodel. <laughs> Still, Dan's getting to the end of his deck. He can do six pretty easily. Um, and he's got a candlestick maker in there, right? I think this is still... And he can turn. certainly... Double remodel. I don't like that. That scores two points. Oh, yeah, also you can't do it. That's true. Um... You get six from Province, you lose two from Wayfair, your opponent gets three from Duchy. It's... Dan should draw one. That seems pretty clear. I mean, surely you pick yeah. one of the Wayfarers, right? Like, I, I would think that would be the first thing you could do, because you know you can't play them both. Yep, sure enough, he picks a Wayfarer. What's that last word? Is that Dan Candlestick Maker? He has a candlestick in his deck, right? That he hasn't seen? Yeah, yeah candlestick. So Dan can gain a gold with one governor, certainly. Um, uh, I feel like this... Oh, this is an interesting one. It is CSM, right? Yeah, it's gotta be. Um, where's the win? So what he needs is tin money. I think that's probably the easiest way to get this. And... He's got that, right? Uh, oh, no he, no, he needs to take curses as well. That's harder. Um, I, I'm, he I'm, takes one with the curse hold, right? I, and then he needs to... I, I keep thinking he's got... Oh, yeah, all the he, points, yeah. Tinwin ends up not being enough because he'll take points off those curses. Huh. Yeah. So he's taking negative two points. He'll be at four. He needs to hit nine points. He actually needs 13 total, um, which he's got... Five in hand, plus two golds he could gain from the governor. So, ah, I think Andy Smith might have this. Um, yeah, yeah, there's nothing Dan can do. He can, buy, he can take a pop and spell it. Let me think. I mean, I don't, I don't want to count Dan out yet. There, there could be a nice play here that I'm not seeing yet. I don't, yeah, I don't think he can take the points lead and empty the curses. So what I do is I just hit single province here, I think. And then gain a gold... Um, maybe gain two golds and then discard. No, no, no. I mean, you definitely got to score a bunch because N.A. Smith piling curses seems relatively trivial. In fact, N.A. Smith could pile curses with his, his current hand right now. Um, is that a winning? Yeah, line but he needs, to, he needs to score. He's a duchy too, right? N.A. Smith. Um, as well as piling curses. Wait, okay, so Wandering Winner is saying gain a gold, pick a storeroom, remodel gold, play CSM. So you get a gold, you pick the storeroom, you remodel gold. That gets you one point. So now you're at seven. Then you play the candlestick maker, you gain a curse, you buy a curse. That doesn't look like it's enough points. 
Well, well you, you, you definitely, you can definitely. I mean, you get you get three points from bottling the gold, right? But well, he gets one point from it, right? Oh no, no you're at three points, three points. That's way fair. I'm still that way, way fair on the brain. Um, um, so you get three from remodeling the gold, three from buying a duchy, and then he's taking two curses. So it doesn't sound like enough. And then I just play governors for gold, draw with them with Wayfair, and buy province. That's, that's the best move, certainly. Right? Say that one more time. Just gain gold with governor, draw them, and then buy province without taking a curse. That's got to be right. Uh, then it does make it at least non-trivial for Renee Smith because he's got to take two curses and like some amount of points, but it still doesn't seem that hard. He needs to find his storeroom, um, which is not clear. There's a lot of wayfarers in this deck. Like, it's not 100% that he finds the storeroom. Well, Ennis um, also has two candlestick right? makers in there, right? Oh, he has, well, yeah, he has two candlestick makers. Yeah, he can yeah, just so like, pick a bunch of these until he finds them. Yeah, Dan, right. also, I think Dan doesn't quite have Yeah. It. But that, that line is like a 10% chance of winning, and I can't find anything else that's like, even close to that. Maybe, maybe not even 10%, but, you know. Uh, this is a toughie. Um, Trouble's saying Dan should have gained silver. Uh, so you could have taken a point lead. Yeah, so I, here... Yeah, best Dan can do here is tie the points. Yeah. Yeah, so if he gained silver, he could take two golds... Take the storeroom, play the candlestick, draw two gold plus silver, and that's eight plus twelve or ten, thirteen, yeah. Yeah, that would have been a nice oh. line. Probably still a losing line, like more than likely I think any sense could still beat that, but it would be a little bit better. Yeah. Um, maybe province estate is better than province plus curse plus duchy. One less point, but one more gain that any Smith has, and he's a little limited on bias. Right, but but right now, Ennis Smith finds storeroom and he wins because he because he, he just plays curse gold for one curse and then plays like looking at his hand. I'm saying, I mean, Dan doesn't know that he has curse gold in hand, right? So, like from Dan's perspective, he has to draw curse gold and um and a card that gives plus buy. So like that's not that's not like well, that's assuming Dan people. even ties in points because like if Dan's behind in points, he could just take a curse and buy a single curse. Right, right, right. So yes, so yes, yes, yes. That's why I'm saying he has to take the province here. Yeah, I assume Dan's just struggling to find a win because I think he knows it's very much lost if Na Smith gets another turn. A little bit of a greedy play last turn from Na Smith, but it looks like it's worked out. I wonder if he counted out how much Dan's deck could do, or what, or if he just took the gamble. Because, I don't know, there's a lot of complicated stuff going on there. I'd be a little worried about my opponent being able to, to win from this position, but as it turns out, I don't think Dan can. I mean, I wouldn't call Anna Smith's play greedy. I mean, it's basically like the obelisks are points. I mean, the wayfarers are points. They're like, it's like a victory card, you know? Yeah. It's like he took a bunch of victory cards and, and lowered the pile to which Dan, I mean, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it. I wouldn't call it, I mean, it seemed like the right play, clearly. Um, I didn't see it at all, obviously, but... Um, I think one way that the draw could have been better would probably have been taking an extra silver. Like, I don't think there was a good reason not to take the silver. How did, like, how did any of the rats doesn't increase your draw, though? Because you're missing out on the ability to play the rats itself. Yeah, Candlestick Maker last seems a little unfortunate. Yeah, actually, the, the, yeah, actually, if you, um, taking the silver, what he probably should have done is province estate, right, and not take a curse. 
Um, that would have been pretty decent province stating here. Because that would put him at uh, one point plus, but then NA Smith would have to... Um, yeah, NA Smith's player one too. So that, yeah, so actually... So if Dan had just taken the silver with Wayfarer, he probably would be in good shape. I'm not understanding Wandering Winter's comments. Here's Detron at the end. Like, if, if you hide out the rats, the problem is just that's one less cantrip in your hand. Um, so he just resigns? <laughs> Why not just bought, take a province? I guess he just figured the chance of any Smith not hitting two curses was so trivial as to be irrelevant. Um, I it was, it, was abs- it was absolutely not not trivial. Like not knowing any Smith starting hand, like he he had like he had like six wayfarers in his deck. But how many like, like how many they, stop cards does he have? You can play all of your actions as pigs until you find. Oh, it's true. They're pigs. Curse oh yeah, it's true. Can can Kelsey make her? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm an idiot. You're right. You're totally right. So, so, so then he, it's probably he, he may have actually just, it may have actually been close to determined. <laughs> this is the worst kingdom for cathedral I think I've ever seen. <laughs> Donate around and ghost ship. <laughs> oh my. Yeah, I I usually auto buy cathedral, but I think here's uh, here's the place for you. <laughs> Dan, do you open humble castle? Get the hovel trash in. <laughs> Pretty sure the answer is no. But, it seems really important on the board, board don't it? Yeah. Um, Plus, you take a points lead. Sounds... Hey, you can you can build pretty big here. You've got tons of action draw villages. None of them are like amazing or anything, but I would I would build a bit. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'd... there's no gold gainer. Um, so, so, if there's a gold gainer, usually you just build a single province on donate boards. And, well, not always, but a lot of the time. But, there's not, I don't know, actually. I don't know how much you build. I mean, can't, no, not candlesticks. <laughs> castles are around, uh, which is a nice second stack of victory points. Yeah, yeah cast, that's true. Castles look very, castles look, look nice here. Um, yeah, so I think you do want to build... Basically, if they go provinces, you can just go castles, and there's more points in the castle stack than there are in the provinces. So, and it's not like it's not trivial to get to eight provinces when you're being ghost shipped. Um. So. Oh, is, it, uh, is, is Tracer saying there's a win in there? Curse province duchy. That doesn't sound winning to me. So if if you buy curse, gain curse. Duchy province. Oh, this is buying province instead of um, gaining off of the governor. Interesting idea. So it sounds like the idea oh. Tracer has is draw with the governor, is discard with the storerooms. Huh. So this sounds like right. it was a win from an that- earlier position in the turn then. Like, if he drew differently. Not from the position Dan was thinking about. No, but I get I get the gist, though. Because each storm draws you... Each governor draws you two cards, so... It's like a little conspiracy at that point. Yeah. Hmm. Ghost Ship looks like a painful card, and one that I think it makes sense to take early. It's going to be awkward if you donate down to a hand of, like, five cards in Ghost Ship, and the Ghost Ship's drawing you, like, literally nothing. But the attack is probably worth it nonetheless. Yeah. Um. So Dan still is donated, you know, turn four. Interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dan is late to the donate. Yeah, so maybe also with Tracer's line, you hide out the rest. Um, so you like keep the curse in your deck so you can store them. It. I mean, not yeah, that's another way to make another dollar. Uh, 
Oh, I trust you tried it and it works, so. Oh, um, okay. Okay. Yeah. It's... Right, right. Yeah, that's true. You, you tie MVP if you don't crash that curse. Interesting. So we, we see a difference in openings here between um, the, the two players. Dan takes yeah. double silver. Uh, and a Smith takes silver candlestick maker. They both had 4-3. Uh, candlestick maker, I can see the rationale. I like plus buy cards before donating because it's really nice to be able to like buy a card and donate at the same turn because you're kind of right. getting like, a, a free extra turn worth of gains in there. Yeah, and that's what he was doing. That's why he, I mean, he, he waited till turn 4 to donate because that's when he had his candlestick maker. Yeah, I suspect that um, if he saw his candlestick maker turn 3, he would have donated in turn 3. And now we've got close to... Uh, <laughs> Look at that. Two different openings, same, same outcome. <laughs> yep. Except that Lenny Smith has the extra coffer. <laughs> so clearly he did the right thing. Yeah, it does look like N.A. Smith's line has gotten there slightly better. Yeah, all, yeah. That being said, Dan is... He's also a player, too. Yeah. yeah. Donate is so tough to play because you have to you have to think a lot in the opening. Yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's yeah. I don't know. Like it's. It's definitely it's definitely tricky. Like you definitely have to consider a lot of different things, but. Um. But yeah, it looks like they they both their lines are pretty like equal in strength here. Yeah, like, like it one, wasn't like one, one, one gave a huge advantage. Like maybe Anna Smith is slightly better, but like I think in donate games sometimes like a lot of different, a lot of different things, like end up building to, at the same rate. He buys a lab. Interesting. I don't know if I want labs here. Well, I mean, your I guess opponent's hitting you with ghost ship, so you're you're probably gonna need to draw a bit. Oh yeah, I certainly gonna need to draw. But I'm saying like, I guess there is no. Um, I guess there is no, no Smithy draw, so labs are the best draw, actually. Um, well, I mean, you can draw with, like, Minstrel plus Ghost Ship or something, but, like, that's just, like, right, a Minstrel Ghost Ship. Right. I do think you probably want two Ghost Ships here. Like, I think things are going to... Maybe, I mean... It can make sense maybe to, like, make sure you're getting the attack time. in every turn, uh, and you don't want to, like, yeah. make a Ghost Ship. Right. And Minstrels look really nice here, like, just like getting through your treasures yeah. and seeing your labs. So he buys Lab Minstrel, okay? Spins his coffers to do it as well. Kind of pays off because he bottom decks his uh, lab and now he'll still be able to draw with the ghost ship. Yeah. <laughs> what does N.A. Smith think? Yes, no. I don't know exactly. He's... Certainly not immediately. Not immediately. I, I just think that you're gonna have you're gonna end up with like a I don't know how long you're actually under control here. I don't think it's gonna be under control the whole game though. Like at some point you're gonna start green and you're gonna lose control of your deck. Um and then you're gonna have to you know, minstrels will be really nice ghost and having a second ghost ship in case you don't fully draw will be a nice, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I like wording down the labs here. The lab seems like a pretty good card. The flag. When would you take the flag? Hmm. Never. <laughs> flag bearer is just like, all it does is tease you because you see an extra card on the top of your deck that you have to put on top. <laughs> oh, I, I, I totally succumb to the flag bearer's whims all the time. I... I am not of the opinion that you can like never be the first one to buy a flag bearer. It's just it's about finding the right time to do it. Actually, yeah. I played a game recently. What was it? I think it was in the the same match I was referencing earlier with E Honda, where I, I bought the flag like turn one or turn two, and he let me have it for like eight turns or something. Uh, it ended up being real significant. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> well, yeah, it is often bad to take the flag bearer first because then your opponent just takes it back and then they're ahead the whole time. Um, but if you can take it with some expectation that like you can keep it for a few turns for whatever reason, then I think it can often be worth it. Right. So Dan, what does Dan do here? Um, Another candlestick. Hmm. I can see wanting a third buy soon-ish. Is it time for that now? Eh, lab and candlestick seems sensible. Could just be like lab and minstrel and get the candlestick next turn. You're gonna be getting another candlestick maker, eventually. Well, yeah, I like I like Lab and Candlestick Maker actually, just because, um, just because I like the idea of having exactly the right amount of draw. <laughs> um, but also, uh, but yeah, I don't know. Like, it's always nice to have the extra buy before you really need it. Need it. Um, yeah, I think Lab Candlestick. And then yeah, next turn you can do Lab Hold, I think. Lab, lab, does that help you win the split? Like, you take two labs now, and you take two labs again. I don't think it would force you to, like, win the lab split or anything. Danny goes for lab candlestick. So, and I spent this kind of a bad draw here. Oh. It looks like Dan is gonna, too. Yeah, <laughs> these are bad draws in both accounts. Uh, now it's Dan take just lab. I don't think he needs a third candlestick. I think it could be lab. just gold. Silver. Silver lab. Okay. Dan yeah, just, just wants to exactly draw a deck. That's all he's. <laughs> I mean, I guess buying the silver is just like it costs you three now and it makes you two bucks on the turn. So it seems kind of worth it, right? Because it costs two cops to get the silver. Um, and it's already making you $2 back on the first turn. Now what does N.A. Smith buy? He needs a third, or not a third, a second candlestick soon. Could could be lag, lab candlestick for him now. Yeah, I could see it. Now is Dan, I might be thinking about taking like double lab and threatening to win the split. Maybe. Uh, Cancer T Moon thirty four. It's the order you click. So yeah, yeah. Like if I if I have a gold and a silver, I click the gold first. It goes on top. Then I click the silver. It goes on top of that. So the card I ultimately want to be the very top of my deck. I click second. It's three one for Ana Smith, I believe. I hope I'm not misleading you. Chat's got my back. Yeah, it's do or die here for Dan, but he's player one in a donate game, so we might see a fifth, a sixth game. CSM Minstrel, interesting. I would think just CSM Lab. Yep, he takes CSM Lab. Their decks are at about the point where they want to have three three potential buys. And I don't think you want to get behind the lab split because drawing is good. And the alternative way to draw is like ghost ship plus a village, which is a lot more expensive. And what's Dan take? Yeah, lab gold, maybe? Given how many labs there are left, I don't think there's much value in taking two because then I just make good counter, but it's taking the last two. If you take one and your opponent takes two, you can take the last one anyway and still be even on the split. And I don't, I don't think any Smith can do three labs. I don't have to count that, but I'm pretty sure. So I think I'll take one lab and then something else. And that something else for me is probably a gold. Sorry, I just I left for a second. I, I, okay, I see. So you're saying Dan, um, yeah, so Dan probably just takes one lab. Because it doesn't, taking two doesn't really help you that much. Right. I would just take, yeah, I guess Lab Gold looks good to me. Like I, I'm thinking, like, I would love to have 
six labs. But I don't see a way Dan can ensure he gets six labs. Uh, and I wouldn't want to have four labs, but I'm pretty sure there's n no possible play here that prevents you from getting five labs. I'm, I'm pretty right, sure optimal right. play, kind of regardless of buys, it's going to end up 5-5. Five, five. Um, so as Dan, I'd, I'd buy one lab and then save the other one for next turn. Yeah. Yep, lab gold, yes. sure enough. Not gold. Um, yeah, you can also just count the money in NH Smith's deck. Um, basically, NH Smith is now down to silver and a gold, it looks like to me. Yeah. Otherwise, your decks are the same. This game's making a lot more sense to me. I remember that first game or two, they were doing all sorts of wonky stuff that I did not see coming and surprised yeah. me. I'm still a little skeptical of. Um, this game, that it, it feels like them. everything that it feels like they should be doing, they're doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, know I know I agree with you. But that, I was going to say that Wayfarer play played by NX Smith in the last game, game, was, game really was really nice. nice. Uh, I didn't see that, see that coming at all. I think these decks oh, wow. are all so right. He... Oh, to answer Team Moon's question, I think these decks can do all right holding green because, like, Wanting Minstrel gives you a decent way to, like, sift through some of it to make sure you find your draw cards. Um, but they'll break down a little bit, I think, because, like, draw is not that plentiful. So NA so Smith lets Dan win the lab split, which is a little weird. He takes lab fold. So Dan just takes the split now. Yeah, as Dan, I would definitely take two labs without thinking about it, and I'm not sure what the third card is. Could be two labs gold, two labs minstrel. Lab lab gold sounds fine. Could take lab lab tax man and turn some of those... Actually, yeah, you have enough action for that. You could turn some of those silvers into golds. I, I'd have to think about that. I'm not sure if that's a serious consideration or not. Um, but I, I, I don't believe in this... the tax man. Or tax the attack won't hit, right? Because Dan, because uh, yeah, NX Mythical top deck is treasures. Yeah. Like, so the attack won't even hit the next man. It's right. going to be kind of bad. Yeah, the, the, the attack is an entirely irrelevant. Um, yeah, you, you could just start it on points and like take Humble Castle. It's less coins than a gold, but it is coins. And I think I'd like to green with cat. Like if I had the choice, I'd like to green with castles more than I'd like to green with provinces. He takes a third candlestick maker, which yeah, that's more than I want. I don't think I'm building big enough to need to have four buys. So what I was actually thinking was lab lab, lab minstrel uh, as a possibility, which I guess is like you're overdrawing a little bit, but like the min like I'm just so worried about not seeing all my labs. And just having like half turns. That's fair, that. but I think with six labs in the deck and so few stop cards, I think it'd have been like a turn too early to add a minstrel. Like a turn or two later, a second minstrel seems fine, but like it's not gonna use the actions. He's only got one terminal in this deck, and yeah. his deck's like the third labs at this point. So Anna Smith takes the flag. It's this is another turn where Anna Smith feels like he's greening kind of early. I guess maybe he feels like he has to because he lost the laboratory split. Um, he chose to lose the lab split. <laughs> yeah, I'm the. Although, all right, so we're seeing a sixth game. I think this looks real bad for Nate Smith. This Dan, I'm just like, I'll take the castles and I'll win. I've got the better deck. There's no way he's emptying eight provinces fast enough. Yeah. I wonder, I mean, you could take a bunch of castles here. I think you might take, like, a castle or two and keep building. Like, you could do Ghost Ship, Minstrel, uh, Humble, Crumbling Castle. Spend, like, two copies I like that. I like that one. Yeah, I think Team is saying the same thing I am. Um, I definitely want a Minstrel Ghost Ship pair. Um, Where would the G come it's from? Or two Minstrels, actually. I consider just two Minstrels and not Minstrel Ghost Ship. Truffles does uh, not want castles. Why not? I don't know. I like the castles. I feel like they're they're a, about as good as provinces. I would think. It depends on the kingdom, but I, I, the castles are a pretty decent source of points. And my main rationale here is my opponent feels like they're greening early, and they're greening early with provinces. So I'll take the, the stack that's not provinces. Yeah. 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 I mean, castles? Yeah. yeah. And, and then, then, like, like either, like, like NX Smith can test Dan on castles and, like, tries to take some of them. And then he slows down provinces, and then the game goes even longer. And then the, the normal awkward dance around castles of, like, who takes Haunted Castle to get that attack in ends up being totally relevant here because you're getting ghost shipped anyway. 
Yeah. yeah. Now, I believe Haunted Castle and Ghost Ship are slightly different somehow. I think, is it Haunted Castle is you top deck two, and then Ghost Ship is you top deck until you get to three? Let me double check this. That's why Smith just resigned. Makes sense. Yeah, that's like... fair. Yeah, so, strictly speaking, if you had, like, a, a big hand for whatever reason, like you'd saved a card or something... Uh, Haunted Castle actually technically only makes you top deck two no matter how many cards you have in hand, whereas Ghost Ship um, makes you top deck until you have three cards in hand. So Ghost Ship's in certain contexts slightly more painful, but it wouldn't have been relevant here. All right, what do we have here? Uh, tower, beggar tower, do it, do it. Okay, you're wandering wonders on the same same train. Just take all the coppers. That's forty six points and. Uh, I don't. I feel like I've done Beggar Tower at some point. I don't remember if it's any good. But it's, it's a thing. It's a pile, it's a pile in time. Like it either works or doesn't. Beggar Tower. Like if, it does, if you don't get all the top of that. <laughs> yeah, you're like at zero points until you hit forty six. Um, As Dan, though, you probably take a market on the open if you're doing Beggar Tower, maybe to get more beggars. I, I have no idea. I wonder how seriously I'm considering. Like I actually don't have a, a great grasp of the, the relative strength of Beggar Tower compared to other stuff. This kingdom doesn't look incredibly strong. But, like, you've got decent cantrips, you've got Monastery. Uh, I, I think I, I, don't, I don't think I would do Beggar Tower. I think that you thin with Monastery, play Market and Fisherman, and buy Den of Sin. Um, but, but, man, the Province stack is 48 points, and, like, Beggar Tower is, like, more points than the Province stack if you get it, if you yeah. finish it. Can you get it in time? I mean, you have to play two beggars a turn for it, though. Like, I don't need, How does it work? Like, if you play one beggar a turn... Yeah, so if you're playing a beggar every turn, starting, like, turn three, which already is... Un there's no way you can reliably guarantee that. But if you could, then it's taking you 15, 15-ish like, turns. 15. Um, and, yeah, it seems too slow, I think. Yeah, it's, like, 18 turns. Um, yeah, I don't... I don't I don't think Beggar Tower works here. I want to believe. I, I would really love to see one of them prove me wrong, but I don't think Beggar Tower is a real but, thing. But you need eight. Again, it's eight. And you also can buy a copper, right? So it's actually four coppers you can need a turn. Yeah. That's actually like 50, no, four, 46 divided by like 12 turns. Well, I mean, so, I, I think Beggar you Tower can't be buying a copper every turn. You, probably, you need to be adding a bunch of beggars to you. Like if you, if you only buy two beggars and then start doing the thing, you're not going to play the beggar right. every turn. Um, so like if I play beggar 15 times... Then that's 45, then I like buy a copper, and then that's 15 turns. I'm not sure how many more times I could justify buying beggar. I'm I'm pretty sure this is just wishful thinking on our collective parts, uh, and they're not going to do it. You probably pile in 18 turns, though, is the question. Also bear in mind that, like, so beggar is 46 points, province is at 48, but, like, if I leave my opponent the stack of, like, fishermen and market and stuff, they're going to get, like, a bunch of power right. points off of those. Um, yeah, and also your opponent can three pile probably while you're doing beggar tower, which is probably the more realistic reason it won't work, right? Yeah. Your opponent just three piles on the board. Yeah, so I think like, the the real strategy here is some combination of just like click markets and fishermen, then with monastery, buy Denison on occasion maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, yeah I'm 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 uncommitted to beggar tower now that I think about like I think the problem is that the opponent can three pile too easily before you get any points. Let's see. Um, so, <laughs> both of them basically monastery, open though. Peddler <laughs> Monastery, but uh, Dan's Peddler comes with a plus buy. So, I'd say Dan's in the lead. I mean, with Monastery, Beggar is a terminal goal, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of cool. <laughs> that could be a funny thing to see here. Like, if they get super thin. You could easily buy a beggar for two, uh, just to to boost your deck strength. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I definitely see a world where they pick up a singular beggar just to quickly increase payload after they've thinned. I think that's possible depending on how the game plays out. Yeah. yeah. So Minion Pond's asking, how does beggar monastery work? Uh, actually, I I think that's one of the people who wasn't listening in. But the answer is, so you play Beggar, you get three coppers in the hand, you play those coppers for three money. So you've got the effect of three coins, like a gold, and then you play your Monastery, you gain those coppers this turn, so that counts towards number of cards gained to trash, and then because those coppers are in play, you can immediately trash the coppers again. 
So like you get three coppers, you play them for three coins, you trash the three coppers again. It's basically like if the beggar just said plus three coins. And like a, a card that just reads plus three coins for a, a t- cost of two coins would like not be a bad way to increase payload real fast. Interesting that Dan chose to draw. Uh, I, I, he's probably looking to you get the plus buy out of that. Because, like, Wandering Winter is considering, like, play market is seal, then you could, like, top deck a market or something. Uh, my guess is Dan might be... Oh, he went for Dennis Sand, and that works, too. That triggers a shuffle. That's not bad. I was thinking he was going to buy, like, Fisherman Monastery or something to that effect. Um, because I could see an argument for taking two cards there. We see the beggar! All right! <laughs> N.A. Smith ain't a chooser. Um, <laughs> and it looks like you're lining up with his uh, monastery too. I I want to believe it's beggar tower. My guess is it's just beggar as a terminal gold, but I I would love to see N A Smith go for a beggar tower, in the yeah the, what the, the what do you call it the elimination what the round where whoever loses goes home <laughs> um, because they're both in the losers brackets. Um, <laughs> Words are failing me. It's late. Oh, and Smith Beggar might not line up with the monastery after all. What does Dan take? Another Denison, perhaps? Could be Fisherman Beggar. Could be Fisherman Silver. Fisherman Second Monastery. Yeah, Second Monastery is probably excessive. Denison seems fine. Is he going to draw the Beggar? He does oh. not. Oh no. I mean, he still has a chance to draw the Monastery next turn. Buy Copper. Be fancy. So if he bought a Copper, he could have trashed a Copper, and that would have been equivalent to doing nothing. Yeah. Actually, maybe it it actually could be relevant because buying copper does uh, counter beggar tower because you're or does it? On the one hand, it counters the total number of points they get. On the other hand, you're reducing the copper no. pile, making it easier for them to empty the pile in the first place. So I'm actually not sure yeah. if you'd want to lower the copper pile versus beggar tower. I think you don't want to lower it. I mean, basically, like beggar tower. If I'm playing against it on this board, I just try to three pile before turn 18, which seems really easy. Yeah, that's fair. That is actually very interesting to me. And Smith did undermine. So he said he played the beggar of the monastery. That's because he played it using way of the seal. So he didn't take the coppers. Uh, no, he didn't. Shock if he did something different. Alrighty, Dan Fisherman Market here. Uh, Fisherman Dan, that works too. Yeah, that's, that's probably better. Beggar. He didn't have a Dan in play. There it is. Alrighty. Yeah, this is a nice play. What do you buy? It's actually even better. This is better than typical beggar criminal gold because he's trashing two estates. Yeah. Um. Well, he would have trashed the two estates regardless, I guess, if he bought two things. Yeah. That's um. True. Like he ends up trashing the three coppers anyway. Right. Right. Never mind. That, but. <laughs> Caravan Din. Yeah, it seems fine. I don't have a strong sense of who's ahead. Let's see what the Din count is. Feels fairly even. I would say Anna Smith might be slightly ahead. D, D, N, N, D, N. There. Even on Dins. They're even on markets. Can you check the beggar split? Who's winning the beggar split? Oh, I know who's winning the beggar split. Uh. N D N D D. Dan's got one more fisherman, although that just changed. Now Dan's got two more fishermen and another market. Aku Tree seems to be confident that uh, N A Smith is in the lead. It's not as obvious to me. I really don't know who's in the lead here. 
Andy Smith needs another market here for sure. He wants the plus buy. I mean, Andy Smith has like two to zero caravans. He's he's three to three to I guess three three and then, but he's got two more caravans and he's also player one. He's gonna you know he's the player one advantage as well. So I think I think Andy Smith's ahead. Yeah, the beggar um, is key. So he bought Fisherman and immediately undid it. All I know, I'm definitely buying market. market. And I'm not sure what else I'm buying with it as N.A. Smith. Fisherman market seems totally fine. I guess you could consider Caravan market, but he's got two dens coming in. Um, yeah, that's true. I mean, I guess it, buying Caravan now is like helping you for the, the turn after next turn. So Caravan market still seems all right, but I, I would have taken Fisherman market there, I think. And he undid that. So I guess he's thinking of something else. I'm trying to figure out how you can add the second beggar as quickly as possible. <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe you just go Conclave Beggar. Uh, no, no, he, he needs the plus buy, though. He really needs plus buy. I'm definitely taking a market here. It could be Market Conclave yeah. to set up for a second beggar. Uh, that could be a thing. Maybe Market Conclave, yeah. Fisherman Overlord. Yeah, that makes sense. So Fisherman Overlord, you're taking one debt compared to Fisherman Market, but it gives you a little bit more flexibility. Yeah, that's not bad. Well, Wandering Winter does not like the Overlord. Yeah, because his markets are going to run. And I mean, you, you play it as a fisherman later, I guess. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I I guess. the Overlord to... doesn't count towards tower points. That's a fair point. Um, oh, I do. Yeah, all right, I'm back on fisherman market. Uh, what did he take? He took Market Conclave. I think he's looking for the double beggar play. That's that's the reason you take a conclave, I think. It'll be funny if poppers run out and like that is fifth. I mean, actually this beggar thing might be a pile control thing too, right? Like last turn you don't trash your coppers, you get an extra poppins actually, worth the points if if the coppers run. It it will be hilarious to me if we have beggar, tower, and the coppers run out, but not because they were playing that combo. Oh yeah, that was a very poor draw from um Dan. This looks bad. What does Dan take? I don't know. Market? Yeah, market. Okay, now I'm going to say an A. Smith is in the lead. Yeah, yeah certainly. Uh, I'll take a second Den of Sin. Got to have that nice, even two uh, durations per turn. Yeah, and then yeah, got to be honest. Yeah, I, I like um, double market din, as Truffles and Wandering Winder are suggesting. Crab Cat wants another beggar. I think I'd be thinking of picking up a beggar the following turn once I got the the plus buys to make it more or less irrelevant. Yeah, you're trashing three cards or so, so you don't really need the den. Well, you're trashing... Oh, yeah, I guess you're trashing th three cards on top of the, the beggar ones. Uh, yeah, yeah, I could see skipping den, maybe? It just it, it feels icky to... I'm one of those people who's very much a sucker to for um, keeping a nice even number of durations and having a nice, simple, symmetrical deck. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it could be something like Fisherman Market Gold. That gets you more money. If I want, didn't want Din, maybe. There it is. The the second <laughs> beggar is him getting too fancy, right? Oh, never mind. I was going to say he could have just bought a gold, but actually, if, he, if his other two buys are Market and Din, he couldn't have afforded the gold. Um, yeah, but the beggar thing is, I mean, there's this hidden value in beggar, which is basically that, well, it's, it's like good and bad. Uh, the coppers might actually pile at some point, and then you may get power points from the beggar play, but you also may run out of coppers, and beggar doesn't give as much money. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and, that, and both those things probably will come into play, just because he's playing, he's getting six coppers a turn now. Like, that's, what, is, what turn is it now? 
Maybe not, though. Yeah. Probably, probably still won't. I mean, I like the idea of having two beggars, but I'm not sure you need it so imminently. Like, you're already... You have surplus money and not enough buys. I would think you pick up more yeah, money, and you can easily pick up a beggar next turn, and you're fine. Right, right. right. No, no, I agree. The opportunity cost of buying the beggar here was like, pretty high. I think he's still in the lead. It's not like a, a, a crucial misplay or anything. No, no not at all. Now, if Dan starts investing in beggars, this could get interesting. Like, I think the coppers will pile if Dan starts buying beggars. So he doesn't, he doesn't play, oh, he does play, I see a lot of fake dead. <laughs> so is Dan, I would take a beggar here as Dan. Dan has to be a beggar. You gotta take a beggar, you gotta take <laughs> the two dollar gold. Fisherman, fisherman, beggar, market. Yeah, that sounds good to me. I like that order. How can you do that? First fisherman. Yeah, you're talking about your, uh, with your seal. Oh, 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 interesting. oh, yeah, true. Yeah, I like the, the double fisherman beggar market idea. I'm not seeing anything obviously better than that. Hmm, I wonder what other lines Dan is considering. Could do like double beggar conclave din or something. Yeah, the double beggar conclave den line is pretty aggressive, but I mean... He does have four buys already. Like, he really needs economy more than he needs buys. Yeah, let, I can see, see that being good. So, so double beggar conclave din puts eight more money in your deck. The fisherman fisherman beggar market puts six more money in your deck, but is easier to draw long term. Uh, I can see it other way. The, the fisherman fisherman beggar line seems like the safe, simple one. The argument for, I guess, the double beggar conclave is, yeah, it's, a, it's aggressive, but maybe you need to like play big and try to come back. Yeah. yeah, they they seem pretty like I don't know. They seem pretty equal to me. So I wonder if you, if you count out, let, let's assume you did do double beggar, and then they take six coppers a piece for like the next three turns. That yeah. does leave Dan getting, or at least Na Smith getting the last four coppers and those uh, tower points. I don't know why Dan would buy two markets, but that seems crazy. Dan seems to agree. He's undoing. He's undoing. Okay. <laughs> if they're if they're getting twelve coppers a turn, it's three turns away. Um, yeah, and in a world where Dan did the double beggar line, I think it's very conceivable that the the coppers could run out. Yeah, but look, there's probably gonna be some pilot. Like, I don't know if people are gonna be buying provinces here. It's gonna be like a tower kind of thing, you know. Yeah. So like, markets, fishermen, and Denison are all at risk of running out. Which is actually exactly what he's saying right now. Um, and then you have to play around that. But like, supposing they're able to play around the pile out, it's easier to, to okay. avoid those than to avoid the impending copper pile out. I, I think there's a very realistic chance if Dan went for the double beggar line that coppers would pile. Yeah, or like someone may like want to, I mean, there may be a incentive to push the copper pile a few more beggars or something. <laughs> Like, 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 obviously you trash like while you're playing the beggars until the last turn, but there's still like points to be gained from like playing the beggars in the last turn for power coppers. Okay, so he does do the fisherman line. So someone is asking, um, Minion Pawn asks, why not get a province? I would not even consider getting a province. Uh, I mean, it seems just very premature. You still want to build a bit, and building in this kingdom is also scoring you points because like each market or fisherman or whatever you buy is going to be worth one point each. Um, eventually because tower you know those piles are going to run out and then you buy one province and your opponent just like runs circles around you with their stronger deck top decking beggar was weird but I guess irrelevant because he's probably going to draw it all
Nine coppers. Now, now it's all about figuring out the splits, splits and sort of, sort of yeah. what's the... N.A. Smith uh, has 16 money and four buys. Correct. I still think I want more buys as N.A. Smith. Um, well, N.A. Smith didn't get to play Way of the Seal because of some conclave issues. Basically, he didn't draw the conclave until the very end, and he wasn't able to seal something. Uh, Wait, not does, that does that make a difference? Conclave. I mean, he has one village and two terminals. To seal something, you would have had to play the beggar as a seal. Um, right, and then right. Which goes well. Which, I mean... Oh, it's true, right. He's, it's a terminal space issue. Yeah, you're right. It, yeah, you're right. It, it, it could be worth it anyway. Like, if you wanted to buy two fishermen here, and then they cost two. I could see an argument for sealing the beggar if I decided I really want two fishermen. Although, as N.A. Smith, uh, I don't know. Maybe you can Dan's say, Dan's got so many fishermen, I want to make him work to empty that pile. Um, yeah. yeah. What does N.A. Smith take? Dan's going to get some nice uh, tower points, at the very least. Yeah, I guess that's why Dan was like hitting the markets pretty hard, and it makes sense, looks, it looks good now. Yeah, the, um, the, the tower points are not insignificant. Dan is ahead by one on markets, ahead by a bunch on fishermen. Four fishermen. And he uh, is, and he's behind on dens. That's just he's behind one he's heavy on dens earlier. But dens are kind of the hardest to pile, so. Well, actually, markets and dens are equally hard to pile. Um... Yeah, so maybe N.A. Smith double, I mean, he could double province and just seems really bad here, but... Yeah, I, I wouldn't double province. I could see taking a single province. You could do, like, fisherman, fisherman, conclave province, or fisherman, fisherman, caravan province, maybe something like that. Uh, fisherman, yeah, yeah, province. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he can't multi-fisherman. Um, well, I mean, he could, but it'd be expensive, because he didn't play the seal. Um... Hmm, I'm not exactly sure. What can Dan's deck do right now? He can kill three coppers. Um, well, no, those are just the... Yeah, so he killed three coppers last turn, so I don't know how much money Dan actually has. It's not that much. This is a, a tough decision, although I feel like N.A. Smith has, in the past, demonstrated a, a very good ability to make the right sequence of yeah. buys in the sort of, like, in-game-ish position to make it awkward for your opponent to win. <laughs> not exactly sure what that looks like, though. Let me think. What, what can Dan do? Dan is $15. That's what they're saying. Dan is $15. Which is just not that much money. Alright, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust you've missed gun, and I'm going to say Dan has 15 bucks. So Dan can't pile, unless I buy a bunch of cards... Um, so I'm not too worried about that. So, so he doesn't want to buy any more. Although, Although he could probably save to buy another den, but I don't think he wants to do that. And he's undoing? Okay. Wonder why. Hmm... The fisherman does seem good. You know it's going to pile out, so that's worth a point. It's only two coins. I put my faith in you, Mist Gun. What do you mean, don't trust me? Uh oh. <laughs> Could be. Um, fisherman Market Market, market we... Conclave? I don't know. I mean, one way to think about it is, is, is like, there's, um, there's, like, the, the, there's 30 tower points, right? You want to not lose the split. Um, you, if you buy a province up on someone, and you can lose the split 12 to 18, right? Um, which I think, like, I think he's, I think it's pretty, like, if you lose, I don't think he'll lose the split, um, 18 to 12. That's pretty big. I think the tower split's going to be just a few points. 
Um, so I don't like. Yeah, I could see taking a little, a few of the tower points, and then provincing or something. Oh, okay, interesting. Two markets and a gold. That was not what I expected. Uh, so I think he's trying to get and a copper. He's lowering the copper pile. <laughs> the copper pile out. It's in the cards. <laughs> Come in. Um, yeah, the the gold is is weird to me, because I mean, for gold you could have just bought Fisherman Conclave, which is basically equivalent, and actually this is exactly what Cass is saying right now. And the Fisherman's gonna be kind of functional with two points even, right? Because it's one point for you, and you're denying one point for your opponent who want want to buy it. I don't think the second right. Conclave is that likely to be awkward. I mean, I guess if you draw it very late. You have to find one of your two conclaves before you've played all types of your cantrips, which I mean, I, you have dens of sin. I can see some world where it's awkward, but it, yeah, it doesn't seem super risky. I'm trying to who do you think ahead here. I think Ellie Smith's ahead, but I'm not entirely sure. Um. Okay, is this game 5 or game 4? It is 3-1 for A. Five. Smith right now, I believe. Or wait, wait. 3-1. Oh, wait, is it 3-1? 3-2, three, two, isn't it? Three, two. I'm, I'm losing track. It's been too long. It's too late. Dan won that game with the labs and donated. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. 3-2 it is. Who goes first next game? In A. Smith, right? I don't think they re-randomize it. Um... So, even if Dan wins this, N.A. Smith does get to be... Oh, no, no, I'm getting this backward. Dan gets to be player one next game. Um, so, yeah, this could be a significant game for N.A. Smith, because if he loses now, it'll, he'll still be in it, but then he'll have to win as player two. Um, Dan, Dan does have $15. Miss Gun was right. So, what's Dan by... As Dan, I think I would like at least one fisherman. He does not play a seal as well, so he can only really the second fisherman is expensive. Um. So if, if the question is in chat. He could buy Fisherman, Fisherman Market, which would be 12 coins, and then you'd buy, I don't know, something else of low relevance, like a silver. And then... How many points would that be? Would be what? Would, then it's meant to win a triple dem then, though. He'd have four points from Fisherman, and he would have no points from Market. And then N.A. Smith can buy a triple din for four points... Can any of do triple din estate? I think that sounds within his triple... grasp. Right, yeah, yeah, that does sound. Yeah. So I think Fisherman, Fisherman Market does sound losing. Another suggestion. I'm not sure how, how much money Anisbeth has, though. We trashed a lot of car- coffers that turn. He's getting them all back, though. Oh. <laughs> uh... no, yeah, no, no, he's getting most of them back. Yeah, yeah. He did trash like, two additional coffers. <laughs> Fish Market Province. Um, definitely does not lose next turn. <laughs> no question there. Um, that would involve yeah. Smith emptying a huge number of piles. I, I kind of like taking the province. Uh, um, although I want to, I want piles within a range that... Okay, so your big advantage here is that you have, you have the, uh, asymmetric dens, and your, your two dens are coming in next turn. So... Um, so kind of want to end, you kind of want to end the game not this turn but the next turn if possible because then because you'll have the two dens you'll you'll negate some of that disadvantage you have on draw. All right, I'm gonna trust Miss Gun again. They were right last time. So assuming Innis okay. has twenty, they could do like triple din fisherman, triple din market. If you lower piles a bit, they can pile out. But if you lower piles and score some amount of points, you're still fine. Yeah. I mean, Fisher Mart Market Province looks. Yeah, I agree. I think it looks pretty good. Just like, I mean, then you win the Fisherman split seven three. So that's four points. And then you win, the, or you win the Fisherman split. No, you don't win the seven three. Oh, you do win the seven three. Yeah, 
That's four points. And then the, you win the market split. No, if Dan buys double fisherman market, actually, he might be okay. Then he wins the fisherman split 8 2. So that's six points at fisherman. And zero on markets. So that's actually a six point advantage. You could do fisherman, but, fisherman province. That makes it harder for N.A. Smith because then he has to buy a market instead of a fisherman, which would be more expensive for him. Um, I don't think the buy is super significant, so maybe double fisherman province is the better line. I'm just wondering what the double fisherman market silver line. Does that seem crazy? Uh, Dan buys three dens, or not Dan, Andy Smith just buys three dens in like some point. No, no, no but, but Dan's winning the fisherman split eight. I was, I was saying we, we messed up the fisherman. Oh. Dan's winning it eight two if you buy two fishermen. Then it's triple den duchy is still enough, right? Um, then that, that, that who's player one. Uh, and it's best player one. That's just high. So if, triple and Dutch. Well, no, so if Dan wins the the, the fisherman split eight two, but N.A. Smith wins the Din split seven to three, then that's two more points oh, for yeah, Dan, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then a Dutchie would be enough for N.A. Smith to win by one, I believe. Oh, so he, that's oh, so yeah, that still loses. Okay, so then yeah, this is not the less aggressive line sounds good. Fisherman Market Province. I still think, but I think Fisherman Fisherman Province sounds like an improvement over Fisherman Market Province because. N.A. Smith can more easily get the last fisherman than the last market. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I, I think I agree with you. It's not you need to buy anyway. And then do you mix in like a... Uh, fisherman, I guess the fisherman market costs the same. I feel like my usual strategy in situations like this is to like calculate a bunch of things out, realize they all suck, and then like click some cards at random and see how it works. Yeah, I think... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Although I do like Dan's position now. I think he's... Uh, yeah. Just because of the timing and stuff, he's in, he's probably gonna win this game. Wait, uh, sorry, who? I think Dan. I think Dan's actually ahead just because of the mm. um. The, the the tower splits in his favor, I think. Okay, so he, he does take the fisherman market province. So I think you, I think you're right. The fisherman fisherman province is better. Um. Yeah, we'll find out. So Andy Smith. Wandering Winter is calling this a forced win. Interesting. I guess the idea is Andy Smith cannot score enough points to make the Din pile out uh, not a threat. We'll find out momentarily. Hmm. Talking about very big numbers in chat. <laughs> How many How coppers you trash is Dan? I guess you don't want to. You don't want to trash more coppers, more, more than three, three, right? Yeah, yeah so he trashes three. three. He, he, he knows what he's Dan knows what he's doing. Yeah, he's keeping some around. Makes sense. Yeah. Well, he he's guaranteed to draw. I think. Um, yeah, you just count out your draw and you make sure you've got enough to draw. It makes sense to do that. I can't Andy Smith like double province or something? How could it be a forced win? I don't understand well, let's see. that. So if Andy Smith double province is here, he's got 17 points. Oh, does he still lose? And then Dan does Fisherman triple Din. The Fisherman will score him, what, like six points? Yeah, I think that would work. Yeah, I think oh, uh, I think this is looking good for Dan. Oh, you're right. Because I forgot they added, added the $2 with the Fisherman in the market. So he's $17. Okay, yeah, so, we so Dan could push him. Yeah, so Dan. I'm not sure why N.A. Smith is not Im immediately playing the beggar. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter when you think, once you've already seen your whole hand and everything. Um, could be considering playing one. Now, there's there's no reason at all to play to the seal anymore. There's only one fisherman left. I would, I would think you just click both beggars and think afterwards. I don't see any so double problem, double, double estate lose, lose automatically. The, the the main reason for sealing, um, in response to to Crabcat's comment, previously was to do the fisherman thing. But with only fish, one fisherman left. I'm not sure why you even care very much about top decking. Um, what what were you asking about? No, I was I was, just, I was asking uh, if 
if if Anna Smith double province and double estates, does that still lose to Dan? I haven't actually. Let's see, double province, double estate. That's fourteen points, so he'll be at nineteen. Dan's got a score eight. Uh, he buys the fisherman. That'll be six points. He buys the din. Oh, yeah. That'll be no points. Or that'll be one. That'll be two points, right? So six plus yeah. two. That that would be nineteen. That'd be a tie. So can he afford fisherman triple din estate? Um, we said Dan has seventeen. Seventeen dollars. Yeah, seventeen. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So Anna Smith has to. Anna Smith has to basically double province, double estate here, which is like gross. But I think that at least forces it to be a tie. Yeah, I mean, as Dan, I could consider just don't lower piles anymore and match that with like a double province of my own or something. Right. 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 I mean, oh, actually, yeah, that that gets awkward, right? Because this is Dan's double din turn. So if he adds two stop yeah. cards and he has one less din in play, then yeah. that you know Dan can fail to draw. Yeah, so maybe N.A. Smith right. does the, the double province, double estate line, and then hopes for Dan to fizzle out in the following turn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it looks, that looks good, good actually. Um, um, double, double province, double estate. estate. Let's yeah. see if he sees it. I bet you he will. That's, That's the, the only line, line he can take, though, I think. Well, otherwise, he just, he just loses, loses next turn. I mean, it's not like a... It's not a mind you can think a lot about. It's like, basically, my opponent's going to pile next turn. I just need to score as much as possible. But I can't, you know. So Miskin's asking if you need the second estate. I, I think the answer is yes, right? Because yeah. um, two province, two estate takes N.A. Smith to 19. And then tripled in Fisherman, we said, takes Dan to 18, I believe. And he has just enough to do, to do that. Dan could take the tie. I guess you could consider is it is it disadvantageous just for Dan to tie? I I think maybe you could just take a single estate because if if you're up three two in the tournament, a tie probably helps you more than your opponent, right? Because if you win the next one, you'll win anyway. The tie is kind of irrelevant. He doesn't. No, Ed Smith needs um he needs all the points even for the tie. I think. Is that right? I oh, maybe you're right. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. because he gets he gets eight points off six six off the fisherman and two off the dens. It well taking two province one fisherman one estate reduces the burden to a pile out right. Oh yeah, yeah, that's it. Hmm. So fisherman, let's see fisherman double problem to state. Um, yeah, I guess. Then, then. I, I think the two province fisherman estate might make sense. So if Danny bought fisherman over market, did he win? I think he does, right? If Danny buys fisherman over market. No. Uh, I'll have to count all this out. <laughs> If he buys fishermen, oh no, then he can't. Then he can't afford the pile out. It's not yeah. a forced win. Yeah. It still okay. seems like it's not quite a forced win anyway. It's not. No. Yeah, like I, I don't think the goal of the the fisherman line would have been to pile out this turn. Yeah. So actually, the the fish. I think fisherman double province looks pretty good. Yeah, I think as N.A. Smith, and maybe he finds something better here, but offering a tie with double province as state fisherman seems quite fine to me. As N.A. Smith, I think I'd take a tie from this position. Double province, right, right. Double province, state fisherman, yeah. Is it not a tie? Wait, we count this out, right? No, double province and state fisherman gives a tie, too, because then Dan buys triple Ben state for the tie, if he wants. Yeah, Wandering Winter seems to disagree. Um, there's some faulty so, so the, the, Oh, he's just calling it. Oh, well, <laughs> that's one way. Uh, okay then. So, I, yeah, definitely, I mean, definitely, double probably fisherman state was. We do get a, Is this the first game seven of the entire tournament? <laughs> Let's find out. 
I love the bracket. Oh, E Honda and Kaplan was game seven. Oh yeah, I think I missed that one. I assume it's Dan's start, right? Like, the person who starts game one is already random. There's no real incentive to re-randomize it. I guess there could be some incentive to re-randomize it. Um, oh yeah, Ihan Nikoplan was the only 4-3. See where we stand while I have the bracket up. So the winner of this goes on to play Psychomatic and loses bracket round four. That's a tough play. Yeah, I haven't. Um, so, 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 so. What was I going to say? Uh, I it's. Some plot in mind that I've forgotten now. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, this board looks. There's no draw. Oh, there's Stewart. So there's like very limited draw. Like Stewart Hamlet doesn't draw because um, when you play Hamlet, you have to discard a copper, discard a card for an action. Um, and then Stewart draws that fact. Um, or Courtyard also draws two cards. You can draw uh, acting with acting group. Act yeah. Right. Acting group gives you a little bit of draw. It's very limited. Um, Right. This um, looks like some stack of like bakers and grand markets. Like you just get real thin real fast as steward, then you play a bunch of grand markets. Yeah, basically. This is That's, with a very high degree of certainty the last game. It is three three, so the winner um takes the whole match. But there is a chance that they tie, and the rules stipulate that a tie is replayed. And so if they tie, this will not oh. be the last game. <laughs> I'd love to see an eighth That's game. A <laughs> Why? That's, that's crazy. crazy. Usually, tie goes the the other tournaments. The tie goes second player, right? Yeah, and pretty much. Oh no! Well, no. Um, I think in most contexts, the tie is just registered as like point five points. Right, right, right. Um, and so that's the normal way it's resolved. In this tournament, they replay it entirely. Yeah, they, they, oh. it, this could just be like like tennis, where like you keep breaking serve and you go on forever. All well, in this case, it just happens every single time. You just like tie over and over and over and over again. Realistically, ties are pretty rare in Dominion. Like it's like a few percent of games. But theoretically, this, this match could go on infinitely. <laughs> could be like what's that match in Wimbledon that went like? Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. I don't remember who it was. <laughs> it went like a hundred. It went like a hundred games. It was like three days long. At some point, I'm going to ask that they go to bed and play in the morning. <laughs> Two separate people said Ishmael. I'm not saying that's up. correct. So, what do we have in the opening? Treasury Steward. Interesting. I, I, I tend to think of Baker as being better than Treasury. Is there a good reason for Treasury here? I mean, I guess you see it more often, but like... You're going to get thin fast enough that you're going to see it every turn anyway. And the flexibility of the coffers seems real nice. I would have thought it would be Baker, Steward, but like, Treasury Steward certainly does not seem bad. Steward is a great card, Minion Pawn. Trashing two cards at once is wonderful. I would oh, think Acting then. Troop here... You got two stewards already. Could be a Hamlet, but Acting Troop seems better. Yeah, he takes Acting Troop. That is going to be so awkward, though. Are you eventually just getting a Hamlet to deal with the steward problem? I guess so, right? You don't want to keep buying Acting Troops. So Acting Troops, I guess, are are better than the, the sort of like cantrip cycling that you get when you just play Hamlet and Steward over and over. But they run out. And then eventually, yeah. I guess, like... Adding a Hamlet to your deck sort of like neutralizes the steward as a as a, like a stop card. Um, I guess it's even slightly better than that because you get like a little bit of cycling if you want it. Um, 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's true. You could rogue for the troops. Is that worth it? Does, like, rogue troop stewards draw? I think it might. Wait, so one acting troop covers... I don't know. Wait. So one acting troop is four villagers. So that covers its own play, two stewards, and a rogue. So you play rogue, acting troop, two stewards. That's four cards. Then it draws four cards. I think that also just cycles. But it earns you two coins. So I think rogue, (laughs) acting troop, double steward is like a fancy conspirator. Or like a grand market without the plus buy. Um. <laughs> Do you trigger here? Um, no. Trashing seems totally fine. I'd probably just buy a Hamlet here. Or court, yeah. Could be courtyard. I mean, you get the villagers. Could be courtyard. He takes the Hamlet though. So Dan looks ahead right now to me. Or he at least he's first player. That's basically the only being first way player ahead. does tend to make you ahead, especially early in the game. Hmm. Yeah. Well, let's see. Dan has trashed six cards. As has oh no, Anisbeth has trashed four cards. And Dan's got the villagers. Yeah, I think I'm liking Dan's position. Uh, N.A. Smith got the baker. So, wondering when they're saying get the rogue. I kind of like it. <laughs> oh, wait. So, Crab Cat's saying troop rogue steward actually draws. Well, you can't count the action at the start of your turn. Right? Because... Yeah, I think it doesn't because you play two. There's four cards you have to play, and you draw four cards. Like if you, guess, if you counted the action at the start of your turn, you'd be like, "Steward's the laboratory." I think you have you have to ask like whether that that set of cards on its own is self-sustaining. And acting troop steward steward rogue draws four cards, but it is four cards, and it gives four actions, but it plays four actions. So I'm pretty sure it is draw and action neutral. In a convoluted way. Maybe instead of going for Grand Marcus, I should just go for Acting Troops, Double Steward, <laughs> Rogue combo. <laughs> yeah. So a- Acting Troop, Two Stewards, Rogue is 14 coins and 4 buys to get the effect of Grand Market minus the buy. Um, it... it I guess it could be a little bit more flexible because you like you could bank up villagers or something. I mean, yeah, grand market is just, just better. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my suggestion was obviously a joke, but I mean, yeah. 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 <laughs> Dan's got the rogue. He's out. He's out for the acting troops. Dan's gonna do it. He's got two stewards, a rogue, and he will imminently have the acting troop. <laughs> I think we're gonna see it. <laughs> I mean, like if you if you already have the two stewards and the acting troop naturally, it kind of does make sense to add the rogue to it. Because uh, at right, that point, it's right, not like right. a fourteen point combination thing. You already got nine coin or fourteen coin combination thing. You already got nine coins of the whole thing in your deck that would otherwise go to waste. Exactly. exactly yeah, it makes it makes sense. It makes sense. So he does, he does have to discard for action here, I think, which. So Wandering Winder is saying the score is 4 minus what Truffles said. So 4 minus 3 minus 3. I think that works out to 4. Ooh, not, not that's the group. That's, that's actually okay, I think. That's, that's actually a little sad. Uh, what's that? Uh, Dan, Dan top directs right. active troops, so you can't get him to play this turn. Yeah, that... Eh, actually, I guess it doesn't really matter much, because, I mean, you just play it next turn. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you can't play both stewards now, I guess, is the downside. Yeah, I guess. Ooh, that is not Treasure the map. buy I expected. Treasure map. So do you want a grand market before you get those? Fascinating. Uh, can you draw all those golds? I mean, I guess he's pretty soon going to have no stop cards. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm on team grand market. I'm like in... N.A. Smith's. 
Yeah. 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 The, the golds as stop guards is a huge issue here. Uh, I figured out then. He wants, he wants to. to um, he, wants he wants to, to trash the treasure map and gain it back with Rose. <laughs> yeah. I'm, shoot. Right. I. I'm. I feel like I'm rooting for Dan at this point because he like, he clawed his way back from the three to one victory. I'm maybe uh, from three three to one deficit. I'd be really sad if he made it to the game uh, seven just to <laughs> throw it away on treasure map. I mean, it, it could be yeah. worse. He could be buying transmute. <laughs> oh, you you remember that game? I, I do. <laughs> um, that was pretty. That was awful. That was, but Dan just, I think Dan didn't play Dominion for a while, right? Like, he just got back into it. Oh, no, 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 no. Transmute's been a bad card forever. <laughs> Let's not make excuses. <laughs> Transmute's been a bad card since before I've started playing Dominion. Um, yeah, that's true. I, that was pretty excusable. Yeah, this is an awkward situation, because he can't yeah, trash the, the coppers now, unless he doesn't want to buy the, whatchamacallit, the treasure map. I think he just wants to go, like, courtyard treasure map, maybe. <laughs> I would love to see him just be like, yeah, the first treasure map was a mistake. I'll, I'll buy a, a baker instead of a second one. Uh. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm, not, I'm not entirely convinced Dan's going to lose this. I think this, what he's doing looks like... Like, it's not horrible, certainly. It's it's fine, and he was in the lead, but boy, is this a way to potentially throw the game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what we're all wondering, Lemon Spawn. Uh, no, JC Threats, it doesn't work that way. The, the two treasure maps both have to be trashed, like, with the treasure map effect. Like, you couldn't even do, like, play treasure map and then activate sewers, trash other map with a sewers effect, and, that like, that still wouldn't count. It, it very directly has to be, like, play the treasure map, trash the tra treasure map. There's no complicated thing that can activate it. So, Dan can get through the gold here, but can he, like, get through the gold and play a Hamlet? And then he can't do everything he wants to do this turn, certainly. With four more cards in attack. Yeah. So this order makes sense. I think you want to draw the Hamlet. And yeah. then... Then discard for buy. And act you made discard for buy an action here, I think. I'm definitely discarding for action. Maybe. I want I to draw back you... through as many of the goals as possible, I think, is my goal here, right? Because I don't want to leave four goals on the top of my deck and, or, and have a very sad turn. Right, right. I think you discard Fraction because uh, you want to have a Villager at the start of the next turn, because you're not going to be able to gain and play the Action Group. Yeah. Um, okay, this is an interesting order. Okay, he, he just wants to get to the Action that, uh, This is making sense to me, I think. I'm liking this order. But he's going to leave a Gold on top now. Yeah, one, one Gold bad. on top I think is doable. I think, I think Dan's found a pretty fine order to play these cards in. It does. It is awkward that he doesn't get to trash the coppers though, because now he's got like four golds. Wait a second. Why do you waste the villager? I'm so confused. Dude, yeah. What? Why did the villager for? Why did he play? <laughs> did I miss something? Why did he? Nah, you just, you just... Does that order not work for some reason, or am I missing? So he just wasted a villager, Dan. He could have discarded the. He could have discarded played the Hamlet first, then the steward. You played the steward first. Am I missing Hamlet. some reason why he should have not just played the Hamlet first? That felt very obvious to me. And I'm thinking yeah, it was. I'm, yeah, I'm so lost by that. I mean, I guess Dan is like, his deck is like plus one villager or something right, right now. Is it? No, it's not. No, it's the, he has three stewards in his deck right now? He has three what? Steward, stewards? Um, yeah. So he got three stewards, and they're none of the trash. Yep, that's right. So Dan is like, uh, so Dan's deck is like losing two villagers a turn, I think. Um, 
I think Ganzak can work this turn. I think it's gonna work this turn, and then it's gonna break next turn. But it, actually, it might break this turn. He'll, he'll get yeah, some break stuff this turn. turn. Like he'll, he'll get a decent amount of buys. Um, I don't think he's gonna like draw his deck and do everything he would like to do. Yeah, he's not gonna he's not gonna be able to put the acting play the acting group. Certainly, that he's in the trash. Andy Smith is gonna try to steal it. <laughs> Wait. So what happens if if Dan takes the acting troop and like doesn't play it? Like realistically, he can't play because he can't draw all the way back around. <laughs> Na Smith is going to get an uh, involuntary treasure map, <laughs> or maybe Na Smith wants the treasure map. <laughs> oh no! Oh yeah, I forgot about yeah. What's Na Smith doing with the rogue? Because he's gonna he's gonna be able to play his act. He's definitely gonna be able to get the acting troop. Just not play it. Well, actually, wait. Dan might not find his rogue. Maybe Na Smith will steal the acting troop after all. I guess it's, he's a four and five chance though. No, he, he'll he'll find it because he's the grand market in there still, right? Yeah, as Dan Smith, not as Dan Smith, I'm combining them as Dan Brooks, I definitely draw on. I want to find the rogue and take the acting troop. Yeah. yeah. I remember I, I played a game not too long ago versus an opponent who got a bunch of rogues. There was a lurker in the kingdom. What on earth? And so it ended up. Why did you just the sewers? What? Sorry. <laughs> what happened? Where did Dan go? Dan Who's just randomly, Dan just randomly discarded the steward. I have confusion. Okay, well, Nate Smith's rogue is gonna pay off after all, I guess. Oh yeah, I was saying there was there was a game where. Uh, they got a bunch of rogues, so the best strat was just like throwing a bunch of counting houses in the trash with Lurker. <laughs> they were getting so frustrated oh, yeah. they kept gaining all the counting houses out of the trash every time they played Lurker. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty awesome. I mean, I still think Dan's ahead. Yeah, um, I mean, N.A. Smith's got the nice, clean deck that's going to do good things every turn. Dan Smith, Dan, every time, <laughs> Dan Brooks has got the slightly more unwieldy deck that has more payload if it pays off. So I guess what Dan decided was to not, to keep a villager around. Um, so, so just to make sure that he draws his turn. I think that's a good, not a bad idea. The Dan Smith alt. Will we find the troop here? Dan Smith 44.5. I mean, I can, 49.5, I mean. Is he drawing one? I would think so. Yeah. And it's Dan, I would love to get in an extra copper trash, but I think he just has to use these stewards for draw every time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, What's in that discard? Just one copper? I think so. Yeah. I don't know why you wouldn't just click Grand Market here quite, but. Oh, he's, he's trying to draw the acting troop. Okay. That makes sense. That was decent gamble, but uh, I mean, I think it's worked. So Dan, yeah, Dan's, I think Dan, what Dan, the treasure maps look good to me now. I'm, I'm really surprised it worked out, but. I, 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 asked, I guess you, you do kind of want the, the treasure map top deck, or not the treasure map, the acting troop top decked. Uh, yeah, I guess it's not really gamble after all, that's fair. Well, no, 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 because the risk is if you play the the rogue, then you play the grand market, and you don't fight the acting troop, you wasted a villager. Um, so that that's the risk there. It's not the top decking aspect; it's the losing a villager aspect. Um, well, this is not looking. This is kind of a crappy draw for Dan. Yep. 
So, so like, what's like, how crappy is it? You can probably still come close to. I mean, if he draws like gold, gold right now, that's pretty sad. It makes sense that Dan's taking a lot longer because N.A. Smith's deck works really well. He doesn't have to worry about like what order I play these cards in to make sure I don't horribly dud. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, double double points. Okay. I, yeah, that's, that's... One province I think seems like it could be fine. Double province I don't like as much. I would think that like, you can get behind the provinces and play towards fairgrounds, I think, easy enough here. Yeah. yeah. You, you could even rogue one of the treasure maps back. At the end of the game. This is a really sad turn for Dan. Uh, single province and fairgrounds? Province Young Witch sounds fine to me, yeah. I can get behind that. I mean, the Young Witch is kind of functionally going to be like a moat or a steward or whatever at this point because you can discard the green cards to it. You don't have to worry about the discard. Witch. I don't know why I'm going with a moat or steward. Witch is a much better example. Young Witch is like functionally a witch because you can discard the green card. No, wait, 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 wait. That's not true. Because if you don't discard the green card with Young Witch, you could be discarding them to Hamlet. So Young Witch still has a drawback relative to like steward and courtyard. The cursing could be worth it. But I think I'm wrong to have said that it was like functionally a witch. Um, anyway, what does Anna Smith do here? <laughs> What's Dan's deck do? Dan's deck can double but not triple. It could probably triple on a good turn, but if it triples on a good turn, you probably lost anyway. I think as Anna Smith, I'm wanting one province here. And then he has 17 coins now. Um, right, so. If, if he doesn't spend coffers, he'll have 15 plus 5 coffers, he'll have 20 next turn. Maybe you do, like, single province, and then you have 7 left. Could you do, like, double steward? I think single province, double steward is threatening to triple province next turn. And then you put... Double, double province, double, double steward. steward? I was saying single province, double steward... Because then I think that's uh -huh. enough for 24 money next turn uh, in a world where, like, Dan tries to play around that. Are you sure it's 23? Yeah, I mean, it he'll, makes he'll, you... He'll have 15 and 4 coffers, which is 19, plus another baker token, which is 20, plus 2 stewards is 24. I'm, I'm pretty sure that that threatens to triple. I mean, the stewards only give you one more dollar. Ooh, right? does he not have enough draw? It's possible that might not, have, not be enough draw there. Um, I, yeah, I didn't look at. I, don't, I think his draw is pretty close to being exact. Fair. So if you two stewards is adding it, you're adding a dollar for steward that's, basically. That's fair. Um, yeah, that's gonna be where we are on that. What about so province? Hmm, I'm not sure. Maybe province steward double courtyard. Is that? Oh, I like that. Yeah. That should that should draw. Yeah, you got a bunch of villagers. I, I think province steward double court might work. So wandering winter wants province courtyard duchy. What does Dan Brooks do in response to province courtyard duchy? Uh, I assume Dan Brooks's response would be to take some number of duchy or fairgrounds and then build a little bit and leave the provinces at three for the moment. Can Dan triple? I don't think... I mean, I, if Dan can triple, he wins anyway. Yeah, I think if you do province courtyard duchy, what, what's the response when Dan just, like, takes a duchy and builds and then threatens to triple next turn and you can't threaten to triple? So I, I think the threat is not, like, Dan immediately tripling. Because, yeah, I, I agree you lose either way if Dan can do that. But suppose you take province courtyard duchy... Dan takes like a duchy or two and builds a little bit and is threatening to, tri to triple the following turn and you have no ability to triple your turn. Like Dan takes no provinces. I, I think that could be the concern there. Um, All right, well, he takes a... He takes a uh, province, province courtyard and baker. Baker courtyard. Huh. That's not what I expected. Baker feels awkward. Like, 
part of the reason Baker is not like that strong of a card, despite being like strictly good for your deck, is just it takes so long to pay off. It's giving you like a coin. You're spending five bucks to get a, a coin per turn, and if you're expecting this game to go one or two more turns, that's just I feel like that's going to pay off kind of slow. Um, maybe he counted it up, and that one extra coin is just like the key threshold for something or other. Anyway, Dan's gonna hit trouble here, I think. Yeah. I agree with Wander and Winter's comment that you play the Courtyard last. It gives you one extra search space. Because like, if you play right. Courtyard, then Steward, you'll draw three cards, put one card back, draw two cards. You'll see the next four cards in your deck. If you play Steward, then Courtyard, you draw two cards, draw three cards. You see five total cards before having to put anything back. And then potentially that like fifth card is like a significant card that you want the ability to play. So it's like minorly better. And then... Dan just needs to draw uh, one gold now, which he should be able to do. That looks like it, right? Uh, nine plus two is eleven. Oh wait, yeah, that's enough. That's enough. He's got it. Got it. All righty. Good games. Yeah, that was uh, entertaining. Dan pulls it out. Nice long match. So in a like, is now out of the tournament. Uh, top seed has been eliminated. Um, yeah. Whew. Yeah, that was, that was a big one. I mean, if there was someone who was going to dethrone him, it makes sense. It could be the second seed. But uh, that was a rather early departure. I'm quite surprised by that. Um yeah, it looks like looks like Dan's back in form, you know. Yeah, well, well played to Dan Brooks. All right, well, thanks for commentating. Uh, yeah, yeah, good, good commentating. I'll sign off now. See everybody around. See you later.